ready when you are. I'm good. Cool. So, um, do y'all know the, kind of the lead up to this situation? Let's let's go over it. Okay. So I, I don't. So. All right. Good. Good. Then I'll 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 give us a good rundown. Um. So these the the monster hunters have already encountered the um, hag before. They didn't fight it. Uh. But they they have been tracking it for a couple of days. Um, so, uh, after the couple days of, uh, tracking, you guys have been led, uh, by the trail to this, uh, ruined city. It seems to be kind of empty, um, and desolate. The, uh, buildings are junky and, uh, have a lot of weather on them, uh, except for the church, um. The church seems to have been uh, occupied because there is a lit torch um, at the front of the church. Is that is that the torch that we see right here at the top? Yep, that's that's just this torch right here. All right. I I assume you guys would go directly <laughs> to the church. Yeah, I mean, at least that's what Atan would want to do. Mm. Atan wants to rush in, kill this thing. Wait, wait. We have to think this thing through. I guess we should set up so so. Um, uh, Aiden, at this point, uh, uh, Daz has has told us about the Night Hag and his experiences with the Night Hag. Mm -hmm. And um, but uh, if Daz wants to go ahead and go through that again, that's fine. Just to give a good refresher. Um, this is in, so this is the same, the story that I wrote for the creature compendium. Yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. So basically the story was that, uh, I, uh, that the, the night hag was feeding off of a young wilder girl and I managed to get it to transfer over to a ravager. And then I brought, um, the ravager to the tower who then uh, was, was taken by the silencers um, who watched the night hag um, suck whatever bit of life he had left. And um, the story is kind of ambiguous what happened next. So, I, I mean, that's really up to, I guess, either Aiden or Mike. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he just says that the silencers took him and that they eventually brought in a specialist to deal with the night hag. So in that phase, the night hag had its stone and was ethereal. Um, and the only way to observe it was if you had a spell or item that allowed you to see into, to see ethereal creatures. Um, That, I mean, that's that's sort of the basics of the story. So I'm assuming you guys were the specialists brought in, or was that another dude who, like, banished it back to its body, or, like, what's what's kind of the premise from there? Uh, so from here, it, it's uh, already been banished back into its body, but it's been running, been pretty elusive. So uh, the current two monster hunters uh, have been assigned the task of Killing it and bringing it, it, bringing its body in for a uh, bounty. Did you hear okay. that, Delgon? We're tasked with killing it. Yeah, why kill it? You you can you can learn more about a creature while it's alive than you can from its corpse. Fair enough. If you can find a way to bring it in, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure. I, I'm sure your characters are sure that um, you would probably be compensated more. Well, this, All right. this just got a lot less fun. I mean, it doesn't need its legs, right? Huh? It doesn't need its legs, right? You can live without your legs. I mean... Uh, so I guess let's start out... Because um, I'd probably say this is the first time that we would have encountered a night hag. So should we do like a knowledge check to see how much each of us knows about them? Sure. All right. 
So it's it's roll one d twenty plus our. Uh... Yeah, plus your knowledge bonus. All right. I'm looking for my knowledge bonus. Oh, here we go. I rolled a twenty one. Okay. Eighteen. And twenty. Okay. Um, so collectively, you you um, your characters are definitely aware that this uh, hag and beings like it are from the Navirum. Uh, they feed off of pain and essence, uh, magical essence, uh, which they torture out of people. Uh, they they enjoy causing destruction. Um, and are very good at hiding themselves within communities. Uh, it's very possible that the um, settlement around you was in fact a community that the witch kind of caused uh, the destruction of. Uh, Have there been these things are or anything like that. No, no corpses around. Just empty. Uh, you guys are also aware that hags are just as formidable. Uh, up close, as they are in the back casting spells. All right. Well, the good thing is, is uh, I do get a uh, some bonuses against Navirite phase, so uh, they're one of my favorite creatures, favorite enemies. Mike, Mike, are you the type of ranger where we get that advantage as your hunting party, or did you take the animal companion? Took the animal companion. I'm used to traveling with a guy that doesn't fight many things. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> I, I'm actually, uh, yeah, yeah, this is, I'm just trying to think through how we actually fight and tackle this thing, uh, considering I am normally not a character that wades into combat either. Uh, I have spent uh, one mana on the armor. Uh, mage armor or something like that? Yeah, yeah Zavian's warding armor. Okay. Uh, and it, it lasts uh, for like five hours. So. so that's that's probably this whole encounter. Yeah, cool. Um, all right. As By the way, just, uh, Mike, I should mention, and you know, you, you, would, you would know this since we've been traveling a bit. I, my character's not just you know wholesale against killing it's just you know you know like if your life was on the line my character would jump in and and do what needs to be done but most of my skills are geared toward you know trying to contain creatures and trying to to to, to create illusions and you know things along those lines so oh, that tends I, to be my strategy yeah apparently you don't have good awareness uh to my smart assery because i was just being a smart ass to you <laughs> no, I, I got that. I just wanted to make sure every because uh, Sam too. I w want to make sure everybody knows that I'm not going to be that guy that's constantly holding <laughs> things up because <laughs> I refuse to kill and I'm a pacifist. No, I just I think there's usually a better way. Mm, okay. Um, I think that that'll provide some interesting things in the future. Uh, sorry. So, um. You were you guys hired by the tower? Yes. Is that yes. So give me kind of like basic descriptions um, and like general reputation that I would know uh, before I was in. Um, I mean, I'm also not sure. Like, uh, was Daz in being a representative of the tower just to make sure? You guys succeeded or like what what's the idea like of bringing daz along on your monster hunting um i sort of figured that daz would want to come along because he would be interested in in seeing this to the end whatever that was okay yeah i'm definitely cool with that and uh i think in as far as the fiction goes atan and delgon you know they might be sort of the pioneers of of like the monster hunting in athletes because they uh they both started 
right as things started to come back into the world. So they, they have, like, many years of experience, you know, and they've got, like, a well-known, like, Monster Hunters bar in Kowal. So it would make sense that the tower, if they needed something to hunt down something new that they'd not really seen before, like, these would be the guys that they would go to. Good. Um, and uh, what about Delgon? What's his reputation uh, as a Luminar or as a spellcaster if he has one? Uh, keep in mind, so like what I'm asking specifically is like my character works for the Tower, which is an organization that you know keeps track of the mages to some degree. That doesn't mean we know shit about you. It's just what have you had dealings with the Tower in the past and other than that, like reputation stuff. Uh, you know, all I all I know is that I I, I was uh, raised in Kowal, went uh, and and learned in the it became a Luminar in the Kowal Library. Uh, and I always imagined myself being the guy that was just immersed in books, learning about ancient creatures, you know, rather than uh, working my way up through ranks or anything like that. So, you know, maybe Mike has some ideas on on connecting that to the tower. Well, uh, in our story, Kowal is, um, I mean, that's that's where all the mages are being hunted. Is that Dan, Danny's character to be aware of all that stuff, right? Correct. Uh, Danny Delgon is actually uh, from the library of Kowal, which uh, this this could actually be an interesting uh, in uh, in in the other group that we play with Sam, where uh, Daz sort of finds a way in that the the librarians not only are, are keepers of knowledge, but they are an underground mage society in Kowal. Okay. Um, so Delgon probably have let you know that he had abilities but that's not something that he lets others know in in Kowal. Yeah, no, I'm just a scholar interested in collecting information about about the creatures of, of Athelis. Okay. Um, um, and what do you guys look like other than your little circular pictures over there? Um, what am I? Uh, six feet tall, 220 pounds, uh, broad shouldered, and I've got uh, a composite short bow, a broad sewed, a uh, uh, Aerodon steel chain mail, and a buckler, as well as like a whole bunch of just random, like, uh, I, I I see Atan as the guy that just has like everything trying to be as uh, as easy to get to as possible. So sort of like how I like to organize my gaming stuff. That's what he's done with all of his monster hunter stuff. You know, <laughs> like the shackles are strapped to the back of his belt. You know, his uh, his uh, stakes are are over on this leg. You know, his his throwing daggers are on this leg. Like like he he. Uh, Looks like a little bit too much a man ready for action. Any visible tattoos? No. Yeah. Uh, Danny, you want to go next or you want me to go? Sure, I'll go. Um, I'm a um, little, I guess I'm sort of the opposite in a lot of ways. Very, you know, nothing ostentatious. Just uh, I have, I have all the survival supplies because I've been doing this a long time, but you know, they're tucked away in a bag. Um, you know, nothing on the surface would even, other than being dusty, would give me away as a, as an adventurer necessarily. Um, but 5'10", 150 pounds. Um, uh, you know, I think odd but semi-athletic because I do do it. Um, um, uh, I do have... Well, you know, I guess I'm above average even strength, but, uh, you know, you saw my stats. You talked about it. So, yeah, low on the wisdom, but intelligent and charismatic. Um, but as far as the uh, – so uh, I mentioned that part because it would affect sort of my demeanor, you know, I guess, uh, how you picture me. But um, Yeah, my character is also – That's it. I carry, and I carry a, a quarter staff, leather, leather armor. Well. 
but that's going to be under some um, some robes. I think robes, not like wizard robes, but you know, just vibranium, nice, more practical kind of stuff. All right, cool. So uh, Daz is five eight. So I'm definitely the shorty of this group. Um, very slight, uh, very thin, 145 pounds. He's also, I think, older than both of you. He's about 42 years old. Um, he, he has uh, salt and pepper, black, uh, and gray hair. But one, on the left side, um, I mean, sorry, on the, on the right side of his face, it's, uh, his hair is bright white. He has one blue eye and one eye that looks milky with a yellow iris. Um, he is all kinds of scarred and, you know, pockmarked and just not attractive at all. I have a charisma of a D for putting it in context. Um, he wears uh, like a just functional vest with lots of pockets. Um, Simple pants, but the most notable features would be that he wears an old gray cloak that, if you look closely at, looks to have lots of dust and cobwebs all over it. And occasionally, you're pretty sure you see a spider crawling in and out of his hood. Um, and uh, it, he just like, occasionally, like when he knocks into stuff, dust comes off. It just looks like this awful old cloak. Um, and then he's carrying a shield that um, is a wooden shield made of dark wood that has runes all uh, etched inside of it. Um, and he has kind of a raspy voice. And uh, since you guys came from the tower, you know that he's a scrivener, which means he's of the order of the rune masters within the tower. Uh, which reminds me, uh, Aiden, I need to roll my two um, numbers for today that I can use with my rune talent. Okay, go ahead. All right, so uh, need to zero this out. All right, I got a seven and a three. Oh, that's those are nice numbers. Yeah. So just so you know how that works is like even an NPC that has to make a saving throw, for example, uh -huh. I can say I've foreseen the future and he rolls a three. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, they just have to be within 30 feet of me. So that's why like low numbers aren't the worst things in the world, though. Obviously, I'm not going to be giving those to myself or any of our friends. Right. Um, all right, cool. Um I'm carrying a dagger. I think it's the only weapon I actually have. Okay. Yeah. No, no visible weapons. All right. Interesting. Uh, that's probably part for the course for a spellcaster in this world. Uh, real quick, Sam. Um, mm -hmm. Just because you mentioned it, I I just decided. Because it feels right that um, uh, I'm, I think uh, uh, my character has quite a few uh, sigil tattoos. Okay, cool. Um, as part of his research, his studies, you know, he would discover uh, these sigils in ancient tombs and used himself as a as a um, um, canvas. Yeah, so and, but I keep them covered. Always keep them covered because you know I'm discreet. So these are things I probably haven't seen yet. Oh yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay, I'm just curious because if I have seen him, like he would, he would investigate for sure. The other thing I would do before we left, uh, which I, um, as we were traveling, is I would have used comprehend languages on both of your names if I didn't already speak the language of your names. Um, what what language do your guys' names come from, or what region? And do they have a meaning beyond uh, just being your name? And if they don't, that's fine. But this is just like one of my guy's quirks. He's really into names. Uh, Atan's name is is from the Kual region. And as far as he knows, it doesn't have any deeper meaning. Okay. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, I know mine would obviously come from Koal also. Um, uh, I hadn't thought about a meaning, but uh, let's say that it's... Um, I don't know. I don't want to give it one. I don't need my uh, Dolgan doesn't know right now. Okay. Um, cool. Um, so, uh, right. so uh, how do the two of you typically engage one of these beasts? Normally, I, I rush in and Delgan yells doesn't. at me. <laughs> uh, I, which, I, heard, I heard Mike I didn't hear Danny I said I think and he doesn't <laughs> so uh, at this point um, I, I I think Atom would be getting his, his short bow ready how um, Aiden how dark is everything like can we I mean we're not able to see into this this Right, we're we're in the middle of the night. I think I forgot to mention that. Um, so you guys can see basically everything in the torchlight. But if you are outside of that torchlight, you could see like maybe ten ten feet in front of you is pushing it. So maybe like five feet in front of you. This is not natural darkness. Well, oh, not natural darkness. Mm-hmm. Um. I, I forget, uh, Delgon. Can you can you cast light? Uh, yes, I think I got something here. I also uh, have a, uh, you know, a torch. I begin to watch Delgon very carefully. Um, well, for the the difference is, I have a hooded lantern, but if you cast light on my shield, because uh, I have a small buckler. Uh, I could use that to light the way, and I would be the target um, for anyone that's that's looking to hurt you guys. Yeah, no, I got sorry, I got uh, I got ghost lights, something for misdirection. There's another spell you might continual flame, which. But there's also the daylight spell. Do you have daylight? I don't have it. I'm just trying to think of all the light-based spells. Continual Flame seems like it'd be the same. I cast it on an object. I don't know how... Uh... I believe that's permanent, though. I'm not sure if I want my shield glowing permanently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Per you're right. Per Surely it can be undone, though, right? Permanent just means it doesn't go away on its own. Right. Uh, so a, a flame equivalent to the brightness of a torch... Sorry, I have the spell cards right here. Brings forth from an object that you touch. The effect looks like a regular flame, but it creates no heat and doesn't use oxygen. A continual flame can be covered and hidden, but not smothered or quenched. Uh, it's permanent until dispelled, so you would have to have dispel magic to eventually turn it off in the future. Oh, you actually have to cast, like, I, even the caster would have to then cast dispel magic. Correct, but as the caster, you automatically succeed on dispelling your own spells. I need to use the bathroom. I'll be right back. All right. Do you have dispel magic? No. <laughs> I guess that would have been smart, huh? Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I can cast this thing on you, but you're going to have it forever. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of an easy way for me to carry the light. Um, I could just hand uh, Delgon or Daz my my hooded lantern, and you guys could carry that. So, you know, the, the nice thing about the hooded lantern is you can cut off the light when we need it. But um, I believe doesn't uh, doesn't a lantern give off about thirty feet worth of light, uh, Aiden? Uh, that sounds right, but let me check. Um, I know a torch gives off 20 feet of light, so a lantern should do better than that, right? Right. Well, 
Or I could just wrap a, put a stick on a string around my neck. You can cast continual flame on that stick. Um, all right, so I'm gonna pass off uh, either Daz or Delgon. You want the lantern? Take that, and then I'll uh, take the lantern. Is it hooded or bullseye? Uh, hooded. Uh, yeah, thirty feet. All right. I'm gonna cast detect magic. Um. Okay. Uh, what's the range on that? Like, sixty feet. Sixty feet. Okay. Radius. That's funny. I don't even have my Sagaborn book over by me. <laughs> We're going to run and grab that real quick so I can check on spells. All right. Um, well, you can definitely tell that the uh, there is some magic in the air that's causing the, um, the air to thicken up and not let moonlight through. You're yeah. not really sure um, what's causing that, though. Uh, okay, uh, can I make a spellcraft check to see if I can figure out more? Yeah, you can. Twenty-six. Um. All right, so you're you're pretty sure. Uh, you, you've seen a spell like this before. I've read something about it. Um, it's uh, a spell used to artificially uh, darken the area around them. Um, not many creatures uh, tend to cast this spell, but it is a favorite of the uh, night hags. It's called a uh, darkness. Okay. Uh, I will relay that there is a magical. Uh, darkness in the area, but that and let you know that I, I have no power over light or a way to dispel the darkness. Would Dalgon, would your continual flame do anything versus this unnatural darkness? I it doesn't say any more than uh, what he said, so I oh, can I do a knowledge check? Mm-hmm. Something like that? Yeah. Oh, that'd be... Oh, yeah, one... D Here's the, the, the answer is right here at the end. It says, light spells counter and dispel darkness-based spells of an equal or lower level, and that's in the continual flame uh, description in the book. I don't know if it's on your sheet. It's not on my sheet, but okay, perfect. Um, um, so it's a five mana spell. So Mike and I have actually, I don't, we haven't, you haven't, have you decided how you want the light spells to interact? Is it just, if it costs more mana that it dispels it? Yes. Okay. Well, so if this is magical, magical darkness, then I would say that we, instead of trying to deal with this with the mundane, uh, lantern, let let's grab a rock or a stick or something around here and cast your continual flame on it and see if that has any effect on this. Well, whatever we cast it on, we're gonna have to carry because it's a five. Wait, five? Or I'm sorry, a, a uh... wait, where did it go? Sorry, yeah, it's a five mana spell. Um, where's my where's my total um, mana? Um, I have a bit of string if you want. Oh, the mana pool is sixty. So yeah, never mind. That's that. So I can. That means I. That's the mana pool is what I'm. That means I can cast quite. I am, I guess, eight. So, so yeah, all right, I'll cast it on whatever whatever you like. All right, someone just 
grab grab a stick. Let's cast continual flame on it, and then we'll strap that to my forearm. Hey, no. What about my staff? I'll just do it on my own staff. Do you want your staff to be burning forever, though? Won't be really walking into town with it after that. Cover the, you it said you can cover the flames. You can cover the flame, and it, it will go out. So he'd just have to have a special cover for his staff. Uh, I'll take the hood off your lantern. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's a, for a problem for a later time, right? Yeah, that's a future you problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, look, I, it's it's just the quarter staff. I'll toss it and get a new one. Doesn't matter. I thought that's oh, your unless, ma- magical legacy item. Right now, you just made me realize that I don't. Did I decide <laughs> on that? I was going to say I have a piece of string. If you'd like to cast it on some of this string. You could then put it around your neck or around your hand, or we could even tie it to uh, Eaton's sword. Wait, it doesn't... Does it burn? No. No, it no heat whatsoever. Oh, yeah, it creates no heat. That's right. But that also means it won't combust other things. So, yeah. Yeah. Right, let's do that. All right. So I'll take out my dagger, un- unspool some of the string, cut it, and hand it to Delgar. And I cast Continual Flame. And I roll to see if I learn Continual Flame. Come on, roll. 24? Is that enough? Yeah, five minutes. That's a 20. Woohoo. All right, dude. See, we did all that for a reason, Aiden. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm also picturing while all this is going on, uh, Tooth was just up there, like pawing at the wall next to the lit torch. <laughs> and we're just like, shh, shh, cat, keep it down. <laughs> that was my entire thought through that whole thing. I was like, there's a torch right there. Well, so so there's a reason why I wanted something that was not holding me down is because I've got my buckler shield and I want to have my bow ready um, because I've got the, the iron barbed arrows and uh, I've got rapid shots. So... Uh. That means I get three shots with my with my short bow, um, including and uh, I I am six level, so I have crippling strike as well. So I don't want to be holding a torch or a lantern because I want to be shooting that bow as quick as I can. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, All right. So now that we have this our our torch light, it doesn't increase the radius of it, but it should dispel the darkness in the radius that we have. So, um, who's carrying the string? Actually, uh, maybe, uh, uh, Etan, maybe actually you should, since you'll be in the lead. Yeah. All right, wrap around my wrist. Okay. Um, and that, uh, how, how, what's the radius on that? It's, it says it works as a standard torch. Okay, so 30 feet. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Now you're emitting 30 feet of light. Well, that's neat. All right. So, um, Hey, uh, by the way, I'm sorry. On a quick side note, uh, uh, I I was just reading this thing and the spell book ability. And it says the Luminar spell book can be, uh, doesn't have to be an actual book. It can be a staff inscribed with runes or D. I didn't, I forgot about that. So, um, that's my spell book is the tattoos. That's how I do it as well. Oh man, you guys are like best friends. Um, and yet was a, <laughs> I, I just learned he was a wizard though. So this is all, it's all brand new. I feel a tingly sensation inside. Um, all right. Uh, Eaton. How do you say it again? Eton? Eton. Eton. Uh, are you more of a um, uh, melee fighter or ranged fighter when you really have to do the most damage possible? Um, I'm actually I, I'm right down the middle. I'm both. All right. Do you have a preference? Nope. I have to make up for your shortcomings, so I just have to do it all. <laughs> All right, so I, I see a path up ahead. I'm ready to go in. 
All right, go for it. I'm going to cast uh, Cat's Grace on my spell self. I'm going to empower it. So I get a D4 plus one, and then I'll get an additional D6. So I get, oh, a five? Well, that's nice. Oh, wow. And another five. So I get a plus 10 to my decks right now. For the <laughs> oh, next, my God. <laughs> for the next um, five hours, which you already told me is going to be most of this encounter. Yeah. Uh, do I just put that on my sheet in this system? Uh, yeah, I think I think you can do that. Okay, well, keep. I'll, I'll be editing that if, if, as you guys want to move forward, we don't have to wait. Yeah, on. yeah, yeah. And we're not in turns or anything, so you guys can just move. I believe that there's a. I just pulled your sheet up to check. Um, I believe that under modifier, maybe you can put in ten. Um, there's a bonus or penalty. Do I just put a plus ten as the bonus? That gives me a twenty-six, which makes my. Uh, which that should be right on the 16. Uh, yeah, so that gives me a plus eight modifier and it affected, yeah, it affected everything that's dex based already. So that's sweet. Nice. All right. I'm checking to make sure I didn't mess with it when I was looking at it. Nope, you got it in there. All right. Um, all right. So I'm going to uh, cautiously move in about 15 feet, keeping an eye to the right here where I can already see there's another opening. Okay. Um. So as you walk in, uh, you step over the rubble and you see a uh, door here, but it seems not to really serve any purpose since you can just walk through the rubble here and get to the same hallway. But if you want to go through that door, you can. Nothing's stopping you. All right. I don't I don't trust uh, holes in walls. So uh, I'm going to walk over and... Uh, well, you're right. We don't have a rogue. I'm just going to kick the door down. All right. Well, uh, did you say strength? Yeah. All right. Or athletics. Probably athletics. Yeah, that door just easily kicked open. All right. So are, you, are the rest of you following uh, Aton? Don't forget Tooth as well. Yeah, um, I, I, uh, tooth was making sure I got in okay, so I, I whistled to him and he comes... Uh, padding up beside me. <laughs> All right, I'm going to walk through the door. Okay. Uh, there's an empty hallway. And uh, you see... Roll perception for me. All right. Uh, awareness. Awareness. Excuse me. That's okay. It took me about a year to change that. Uh, in my vocab as well. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, I barely see the hallway ahead of me. Yeah. You, 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 you think you're alone here. Oh, also, uh, Danny, if you wanted to roll when you saw me call uh, Learn Cat's Grace, if you don't have Cat's Grace, you can learn it by watching me. Yeah, can I? Uh, is it is it too late to, to do that? Nope, you can do it. All right, what do I need to do? It's a spellcraft roll, and it's a three mana spell, so the difficulty is eight phoenix. Oh, I'm man. sorry. Hey guys, I just learned something really cool. Uh, this sheet that Conrad set up for us. If you open up your character sheet in in uh, roll twenty, which you can actually tell it to open up. Uh, if you go to settings, you can say use window pop-outs for characters. So it can actually pop out as a different web page, like to go on a different monitor. But next to all the skills is a D20 icon, and if you roll it, it will pop up. It will roll your awareness check for you or your spellcraft check or whatever 
without having to type anything in. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, you see where I just uh, like re-rolled my awareness that I know doesn't count, but is way better? Yeah, uh, uh, that's cool. So that's that's a lot easier if someone's like, roll a reflex. You just click that button right there. That's pretty neat. Oh, and also it has it next to all the ability checks as well. That's nice. Initiative. And Conrad did a really good job on, on this sheet. I still have to figure out the uh, uh, rolling for weapons. I haven't quite figured out how that works yet. But. Um, so I don't – I'll let you know that um, I don't have the thief's uh, skills, but I am fairly good at detecting mundane traps. Okay. So no um, hidden traps, but like – so my wire right there. Yeah. So my character's thievery is eleven right now because I just gave myself the the plus ten to dex. Okay. So I've got a great modifier, but I don't have a level of rogue, so I can't detect anything that's DC above twenty. All right. Oh, by the way, I guess my roll of seven. I probably did not learn that spell. That is correct. Yeah, you need a uh, eighteen. You also roll a one. Yeah, which auto fails anyway. Okay. Well, uh, you, you're pretty safe. You guys all feel pretty safe in this hallway and uh, room. All right. Okay. So um, I've got one of those uh, barbed arrows knocked up and ready, and I'm going to uh, proceed down the hallway to right here. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to follow in as okay. well. Yeah, I'm staying a few steps behind. I'm uh, I'm gonna cast detect poison, which has a range. Me right side up. <laughs> How do you gonna, do that? I think you can do it with this blue thing. You can turn. Yourself. Yeah, if you select it, there's a little uh, thing to drag. <laughs> That's awesome. In case you want to look a different direction, um, I'm gonna cast detect poison. Uh, to um, basically as my alternative to detect traps. Um, and then uh, I'm going to say to Delgon, I'm going to concentrate to see if there's poison. If you could, I've seen you cast one spell. You are, I assume you have the ability to detect magic. Sure. Um, between the two of us, we can do our best to uh, at least detect some of what's going on before we run into something foul. Yep. Okay. It's, All right, so detect magic is going to be... It's a zero mana spell, so you can just... But uh, spellcraft for the roll? Yep. Uh, detect poison doesn't... I think I, I, think I got that one. Oh yeah. You do you have to take magic or you didn't have to take magic? I do, I just rolled. Oh okay, okay, I see. I thought you were rolling to learn it. Oh no no no, I just cast it. Gotcha, yeah. Uh and then uh here are there any more doors or these are stairs right here? Uh no, that's broken wall. A broken section. Yeah, so that's uh that that would be like a grand hallway in there. Okay. Um, there's another door here. Okay. I will. Um... Continue to detect for poison. Okay. Um, no poison that you can see. And then I will. Uh... Roll uh, thievery to detect if there's a trap. See if this works. Uh, on this door? Yeah. Okay. It says syntax error expected, but in not found. Okay. Just uh, just roll manually then. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, 
24? Uh, you are, you can be thoroughly sure there is no trap on that door. Okay. I will so say... What that. about the detect magic spell? Oh, did you cast that? Yeah, yeah, that was the, uh, 26 above. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Sam, your detect magic spell is still on too, right? Um, I can't have both that um, I'm concentrating on, so I, I switched to detect poison. Okay. Um, hang, hang on one second. I'm sorry. No problem. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get poison going to the gym. I'm going to use this okay. Poison. So. All right. I'll be back late. Okay. See you All right. Love you. All right. Sorry. All right. So uh, upon uh, going further into the the church, the the ruined temple, you can uh, see through um, at least a couple walls. There's some magic emanating north of you. Okay. I relay this. Okay. So north north is towards the top of the screen. Yeah. Uh, what weapon does Eaton have out now? Uh, the short bow. All right. Um, um, I will say uh, I can enhance your natural dexterity. Um, are you willing to let me cast a spell upon you? Of course. Of course. All right. I will mark the back of your neck with a rune and cast Cat's Grace on you. Get a D four plus one. I'm gonna enhance it as well. So uh, you get a plus three from the D four and a plus four from the D six. So you get a plus seven to your dexterity, and that's gonna last for the next five hours. All right, that pops me up to twenty one. Damn. That means. And uh, D- Danny, you can make another attempt to learn the spell because you see me cast it again. Oh, yeah. Hang on. Oh. Sorry, Emily. Okay. Seventeen. Nope. Almost. So close. <laughs> Okay. Right. Uh, I'll let you know that I'm fairly certain there are no traps on this door, and I sense no poison. Um, does the door appear to be locked? Um, yes. Um, well, I, I have uh, lock picks, so um, I can pick the lock or try, anyways. All right. Give it a shot. Yeah. Better than a ton kicking it down. Uh, 20, <laughs> 29? Yeah. You you pop the lock off of that door. All right. I will then step back to let um, e- Ethan go first. <laughs> his name keeps changing. <laughs> I can't say his name right. What is it again? It's not like Eton. Eton? Yeah, Eton. 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 <laughs> All right, so you're going to go through that door, Aton? Yep. All right. There's a dude right there, and he's pretty surprised that you came through. All right. I'm going to uh, do my rapid shot with the bow. Okay. What if he's just a dude? <laughs> <laughs> All right. What does this dude look like, for what it's worth? Oh, um... He is covered in tattoos. Uh, his skin is cracking, and um, through the cracking, you can see like magical essence kind of spilling out. Neat. <laughs> right. All right. You can you can you can kill him, but just keep in mind you almost potentially just murdered a dude. <laughs> I mean, look. Here's the thing. 
if you're hanging out like behind a door at a ruined like church with a darkness <laughs> spell cast, you know, I'm sorry if I put an arrow in you. <laughs> when we go back, did you save the prisoners? Yeah, about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, just to make Delgon happy, I'm not a I'm not a noob. I would definitely at least I'm gonna roll awareness check just to see what this guy looks like. So I'm not just popping people off. Seven. Nope. I'm firing at someone I don't know anything about. All right, <laughs> kick his kick his ass. All right, so uh, so this will be my first shot. Uh, I rolled a. 16 you hit him plus nine plus the new <laughs> yeah, yeah that, there's a whole bunch uh second shot is uh 14 plus four uh, so the first one's the barbed arrow the next one's a normal arrow and then my rapid shot which is at uh negative two on that uh plus four so it's only plus two so 17 plus two is 19 and it's two hits Two hits. So that's uh, five. Uh, five on the uh, first shot. Okay. And uh, five on the second shot. But the barbed arrow is stuck in him, so it doesn't, like, he would have to pull that out if he's trying to cast any spells. All right. Both arrows hit him and pin him against the wall. Yeah, he lets out a, a cry and then drops a very uh, ceremonial-looking dagger to the ground. Detect any poison? Uh, no. Magic? Uh, a little bit, but not like a spell, just like magical essence coming out of the cracks of his face. So this when guy's out. Like, he's he's pinned to the wall and he's dead? Yeah, he's dead. Okay. I want to move in and uh, inspect... Can I go in this one? Okay, yeah. I'm going to go inspect his tattoos. Okay. Um, roll knowledge for me. Yep. Twenty-five. And I rolled a natural 20. Awesome. Yeah, this these tattoos are not anything from the tower. These seem to be like a language from the Nevirum. Oh, I've encountered uh, that language before. I don't have that language, though. Um, hmm. How long does comprehend? Um, yeah, I'm going to spend the one mana to comprehend languages. Okay. It'll last for 50 minutes. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to touch the, his skin, which allows me to read uh, whatever is on his skin. All right. Um, so by uh, reading his uh, skin, you can kind of get a grasp of what this this uh these runes carved into his skin are um they seem to be uh indicating that this guy is maybe a uh a channel for magic through the Navirum uh to come through okay. um, uh, he's definitely a piece of um a larger uh puzzle okay. and um do the marks look willingly submitted to or um are there signs of like torture or struggle? Um, they, they look uh, willing. Okay. Um, I will relate to both of you guys that um, he's marked with the language of the Navirum, and uh, he has become a conduit for energy from that realm. He submitted to these markings willingly. Um, and I'm correct in understanding that um, he does not appear to be, like, this is not a spell book that's on him? Correct. Okay. Does he have a spell book or, in this world, it could be a staff or any other method of tracking spells on him? No. Okay. 
I make sure to relay all that as well. I'm, I'm going to um, inspect the dagger. Okay. You said it was ceremonial, so that sounds interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's carved with all sorts of, um, like a like a bone motif. Though it is not made of bone itself, it's made out of uh, metal. Uh, iron, actually. Um, and it has a um, a name carved into it. Yanira. Yanira. I will touch the name of the blade. What language is it? Um, it is the same language uh, of the the runes carved into this guy. So it's it's in Navirum, um, and uh, does it have a meaning in Navirum? Uh, Other than being a name. No. It, it's just a name. All right. I will relay all that. Is this is this heading back outside? Uh, because this looks like outdoor area out here, or yeah. So there's there's a there's this like wall right here. I don't. I think you can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, That's just like ruined wall, and it looks like the grass grew over the ruined wall around here. All right. Um, Eton. Uh, can you investigate around the corner just so make sure we're not being followed? Uh, you mean outside, like down here? Yes. Sorry, I was pointing to it, and I realized you came actually see yeah, this area. Just go illuminate that for a second. All right. Okay. Seems clear, but you might as well roll. Yeah, awareness. Yeah, it seems pretty clear. However, uh, Danny, I want you to roll me a perception check as well. Oh. Uh. Uh, wait a minute. Where's perception? Or awareness. I'm sorry. Aware. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh crap. That's a that's a wisdom check. All right. Crossing your fingers. <laughs> Still got a plus two. No. Nope. Uh, all's all's good. <laughs> <laughs> It's a normal day inside a, an abandoned, busted-up church. Yeah, well, I, I relay that everything's perfectly normal. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, I felt like looking around, and everything's just as it was, so <laughs> good to go. All right, so let's head back in, and uh, I'm going to head up and, and jump through the wall up here. Okay. Um, and when I say jump, I'm going to, like, cautiously spring forth. <laughs> um, oh. Do you? Okay. All right. Uh, there's a couple more guys in here I'm about to put arrows in. Uh, I shout. Do I need to roll initiative? Yeah, we're all going to roll initiative now. All right. We add a soul in there. How did I roll an 11.5 on initiative? I have no idea. <laughs> Man. Don't forget your dex modifier uh, as well. It's going to uh, be 11.35 then. What, um, how, how do we roll initiative in this system? Is there a place where I roll initiative or did I just roll a normal d20? Uh, it's a d20 plus your dex mod. Then what did he do then? I'm confused. I don't know, man. That's really weird. Oh, okay. I clicked I clicked the um, rolling it on the sheet, so I just don't know. I don't know who these people are in this. Yours doesn't even show the dice roll. It shows a gold bar. Yeah. yeah I'm, ro I'm rolling it off my sheet. Off my character sheet. I have a 20. Oh, okay. I have a 26 initiative. Dang, dude. I get a plus 10. I didn't even roll that crazy. <laughs> All right. Um, and I guess uh, Tooth is going to roll too. Um, he's a 21.2. Dude, <laughs> what the hell is going on, man? 
Cancel those out. Roll, roll regular initiative. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm rolling right now. Um, <laughs> so 10, 10 for tooth. Right, 10 for tooth. Uh, Sam, you got a 26 and Delgon, what did you get? 13. Cool. So that means As gets to go first. Um. Can Daz even see what's happening in the room? I'm going to hold my action. Okay. Uh, this guy screams uh, for Yanira and then charges at you, Itan. Uh, what, um, are you in this square? Yeah, I'll be right there. Or, like, this is a square that you could be in, too. No, I said I left in. Okay, so he'll be in this square. So he charges at you and he's going to swing. All right, my oh, by the way, what 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 do they? Can we at least what do they look like? They look kind of like that the same guy. They have the tattoos. They're various people, uh, but they all seem. Um, if you were to remove the tattoos and the robe, they seem like they would be normal guys. Wait, but the other guy had some cracks or something. You said. Yeah, they have those too. If you. Okay. Yeah. So eighteen. Does that hit you? Nope. 25 okay. is my current AC. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got two magic legacy uh, armors, plus this uh, this beautiful uh, bonus that, that Daz gave me. I might change adventuring partners. <laughs> All right. Delgon, go ahead. Um... Okay, uh, oh wait, I thought there were two guys. Did I, I might have been looking at the thing and, oh, that's right, four guys. All right, so, um, crap. My plan was not based on that many. Um, <laughs> is this the only break in the wall, or is there a break in this square as well here? Um, let me check. Uh, you can shoot through that break, but you couldn't get through that break. Okay. Uh, there's also that one to the left in this corner as well. Oh, okay, nice. Yep. All right. Uh, I am going to, um, try to, I, I gotta, I gotta think about this. The, what I'm thinking is cast, uh, web. Web has a 20 foot radius circle. I need to cast it where... Unfortunately, a ton leaped in. Otherwise, we'd have a little distance, and I could just cast at them, and we can range. But uh, since he's right there, I don't want him to get caught. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. So, you can catch me in web. I'm about to stand toe to toe to these guys. Well, then you. Well, uh, yeah, and then you then you jump on your bow. So yeah, I'm gonna uh, maybe what? How many? Uh, how many feet is one uh, square? Five. Five. Five, so it's going to be a block of four. Is that right? If it's a uh, yeah, twenty. Yeah. Square. Wait, it's not around me, is it? No, I would. No, no. it's uh, at a point. Yeah. So just uh, what uh, just let me know what squares you want to hit. Yeah, I'm gonna um. You know what? Sorry, Edahan. Um, I'm going to. How do I? I've seen you guys do it. How do you draw like a, oh, here. If you hold your. Right. Do you, did you see that? Yeah, I saw that ping. So you want to cast it there? Yeah, ba squares. basically, because I, oh, no, no, no. I'm Get the uh, the two guys around Etan and Etan. Unfortunately, he's going to be caught. This too. one? Yep, that's It'd it. It'd be a bigger right. square than that, right? Because it's 20 foot. Is it a 20 foot square? Uh. Well, yeah, I guess I was. Oh, I guess you're right. So yes, yeah, four by four. 
It's twenty foot radius circle. Yeah, so go ahead and get the get the third guy to the oh, it, all but the guy all the way to the left. That's perfect. Cool. All right, that looks that looks good. I'm gonna roll to see if I learn web. Go for <laughs> it. Nope, I rolled a one. <laughs> Right. Uh, this guy thought about running in here, and then he saw the web, and he's like, catch it on the flip side, and he's just going to hang out. He's going to wait. Uh, I'm going to take my action uh, right before uh, Ethan, Ethan. Okay. I'm going to move here, and I'm going to cast Bull's Strength on Ethan. Cool. Uh, I'm going to empower it. All right. He gets plus three from the D4. And six from the D6. So he gets a plus nine to strength. Damn. 25 strength, so seven ability modifier. And that goes down to my bow as well because it's a composite bow. Oh, so you? Uh, what, I'm sorry, you bro you broke up a little. What was that spell? It's called Bull Strength. You can roll to learn it. It gives. That's what I'm. I am. Yeah, I'm. What I'm doing is I'm empowering it, so I'm just spending the extra mana to add a D6 to the thing. That's the talent. Well, I finally got one. Yay! <laughs> you definitely did with a 23. Hell yeah! I'm sorry. Tell me. Tell me the name one more time. Uh, it's bull like bullshit, and then <laughs> it's strength like the attribute. Bull strength, got it. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, and you actually see me mark uh, a rune which looks like the letter N, uh, which I don't know if your character knows about runes or not, but it's the Uru's rune, which is the rune of the ox or the rune of the bull. All right, I'm done. Okay. So another guy runs into the room and sees the web and is a little off put by it. So it's on. It's go ahead. It's uh, your turn now. Um. All right, I guess I'm going to uh, swing the, the bow down and then uh, slice uh, Dad's broad sewed at this guy here. Get him. All right, I'm going to do... This has a little button for melee, full attack, roll, action. So let's see what this does with the character sheet. Uh, did you, are you going to roll a 25.5? Uh, we'll see. Attack 1 is 18, damage right. 1 is 4. Attack 2 is 25, damage 2 is 8 plus 5. Okay. You uh, you you quell this guy. You cut him down the middle. All right. All right. It's Tooth's turn. All right. He's going to pounce. And, hey Mike, before you go, you should have made a reflex save to see how the web affected you. Oh. We'll oh, do. I forgot to do that for these guys, too. Crap. Oh, yeah, that's right. They, they do get a, a check. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Sam. No problem. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's the DC on that one? It's based off of the mana. So at three mana, hold on. Look at, I don't know DCs. Uh, where's my character? Mike, you're sheet up. Oh, you are all stuff, right? Uh, a three mana spell has a DC of 15. Okay, I got um, two successes then. I guess this guy f failed because he's dead now. Um, yeah, I don't think he was going anywhere anyway. Nah. So if they succeed, they are entangled mm -hmm. but can still move. 
If the save fails, they're entangled and can't move and have to spend a round trying to break out either a DC 20 strength check or a DC 25 escape artist, which I assume in this case is actually acrobatic. Okay. Or maybe thievery. I don't, I don't know. Uh, did you roll your save, Mike? Me? Yeah, it's 23. 23? Okay, you passed. Entangled creatures move at half speed, can't run or charge, take a minus two to attack rolls, and a minus four to dex checks. Okay. Yeah, that's nothing for you, uh, Eton. So you're good. <laughs> like, whatever. But you do get a minus two to all your attack rolls while you're, if, if, while you're in the web. Minus two? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so Tooth is going to pounce over to this guy here. Um, okay. Uh, Nightcats can do that as m it's movement up to 20 feet. And then he gets uh, two uh, of his claw attacks, which let me pull it up and find out the claws are plus eight. All right, here's open. Uh, so 28. Matt, 20. And uh, 19. Oh, shoot, do we want to pull up the... Uh, I'll pull up the character, the our critical hit... Sure. Uh, ...chart... So uh, I'm going to roll for the critical hit is 13. All right. So extra effort, double damage plus three. Oh, wow. So, um, but his, his uh, attacks are actually pretty, pretty low. It does 1d3. So 3d3. Or, or do you multiply it by the, the no, three? No, it's, it's only plus three, so it's not okay. extra. So he rolled a uh, three plus three. So six damage? Six, and then, oh, wait, it was double damage, though, So and another three. So nine damage on that attack. Did okay. both those hits, the 28 and the 19, or just the 28? They both hit. All right, and then the second one is uh, another three damage. Holy shit. Dude, slaughtered. Um, your, your cat's gonna make a reflex save, though. Oh, I mean, he's gonna make that. Do it. Uh, reflex check seventeen. Is that enough? Yeah, that's enough. Yep, it's fifteen. All right. All right. Cool. Um, so we're back to Daz. New round. Um, move here. Okay. And I'm through this crack in the wall here. I'm going to cast just my, my basic range touch attack magic missile. All right. The energy burst. At, uh, which guy? Uh, this guy? This one? Okay. We both doubled up on him. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I currently have a plus 12 for range touch attack. Okay. I got a 21. You definitely hit him? And uh, what do I do these days? 2d4 plus 2. Oh, wow. 2d4 plus 2. Six damage. Okay. Uh, that seemed to have really hurt him. He's still standing, but he's like... He's like uh, hunched over in pain. Cool. All right. This guy, he's going to hit uh, Eitan. You mean he's going to try? He's going to miss Eitan. <laughs> yep. 
Uh, Delgon. <laughs> Wait, why do I get to go? Oh, Delgon, not Dez. Sorry, I was confused. <laughs> yeah, our, our pictures look so similar when they're really small turn order thing. And um, you're both D names, so. Wizards of D. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, remind me, uh, Itahoni, what buffs do you have on you? <laughs> I have Bull's Strength and Cat's Grace. Here, I'll put them on him. Um, okay, the, the cat's great. I'm just, what I'm getting at is I'm trying to decide whether I should, whether sacked, if I should give you a warding armor. Um, but it doesn't seem like they're hitting you anyway. He can't benefit from the warding armor because he's wearing, um, like, it, it won't stack with his current armor. It's a, it's an either-or situation. Okay. You can put it on yourself, though. That would be uh, useful. Well, what are no, uh, I'm, I'm, too, uh, I'm dude in the noggin with my with my staff. Okay. The one directly in front of me. This guy. Next to, yeah. Um, next to a ton. There's a crack right there, but you could hit him if you were here. Oh, I uh, okay. Yeah, so that's good. I'll okay. go there and hit, and I'm hitting him from behind. Yep. Um. Does that give me a bonus? Uh, no. Um, uh, sorry, what, I'm trying to, oh, here we go. Melee is five. All right. And I, I'm going to assume that that's good. Yep, you definitely hit him. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I, I got to ask a question. Uh, okay. I have a plus five melee attack bonus. This doesn't make a difference now anyway, but I'm still... But under quarterstaff, it says plus seven total attack bonus. Is that? Yeah, so you'd, you'd roll that. Oh, plus yes, because the, the staff has plus two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the future, I'll add two more. But okay. um, your, your staff also has improved crit range, then, doesn't it, Nate? Yeah, uh, yeah 18, plus two to crit range. 18 to 20. Oh, okay, sweet. Close. But that would be a natural 18. So. Right. Yeah, yeah but you're right. So, you're on a 17. One or Almost. Uh, that's actually plus. Uh, I didn't. I, I just hit the little dice icon. I was curious, but right. that's uh, that's gonna be so four. It's a good old one damage. Yeah. You ready for bed? Just playing the game. You asked how it was really working. That's my guy right there. That's Mike. That's Danny, and we're fighting the evil food. I'm not gonna take like him. Yep. That's uh, Aiden's. So this cultist is going to run up and hit you, Daz. Okay. Or attempt to. Uh, he does not. Yeah, you did get the bonus there, right? Because when you when you said good old one, I just wanted to make sure you was the. Oh, the plus three. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, so four total. All right, so that, that's a much uh, bigger hit on him. He's not dead, but you got him. And then uh, a guy is going to rush at you, uh, Delgon. Guys, I'm going to put Gene to bed, and then I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, that's a 22. Does that hit you, Delgon? I'm sure, but uh, let's see. 15 AC. All right, yeah. So I think that's the first hit this guy, these guys have ever gotten. All right. He does uh, four damage to you. Oh, that guy's in trouble. Nobody makes Delgon bleed his own blood. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's on. Go ahead. Um, I'm just going to cut my way over that guy's mess with Delgon. So uh, let's swing some swords. Let me click this button and see if this works right. That last one didn't add things in correctly. Um, so 
additional attack bonus is additional damage bonus is uh, how much is my bonus it's plus seven That's not right. All right. I need to ask him how that works. All right. So 1d20 plus 15. Um, oh. All right. So the first one is 25. Second okay. roll is... Um, I get a plus 10. Man, these bonuses are crazy. Rolling an 8, it's up an 18. So 25 and 18. Yep, those, those both hit it. <laughs> All right, so I'm about to do uh, roll D8 plus 7. Uh, and 8 plus 7. So 11 and 13 damage. Okay, yeah, he's uh, he's dead. All right, so that was my attack action, uh, and I'm going to do my move action to move up to right here next to him. Okay. All right. And you're standing on top of the other guy? Yeah. Yeah. Squish. H higher ground. <laughs> All right, Tooth, it's your, it's your turn. All right. Um, let me pull up Tooth. Uh, he's also going to pounce. Onto this guy, um, and his are. Let's see, roll d twenty plus eight, and then ah, uh, why isn't slash d twenty like roll d twenty? You're right. It should totally be like that. So eighteen and twenty one. Uh, yep, those both hit. All right, so he does, uh, one damage and three damage. All right, you killed that cultist. Really? That's all he had was four hit points? Daz already hit him. Oh, yeah. All right. Um. I love it that Tooth is, like, bouncing from body to body. Just yeah, just... <laughs> Stab, stab. All right, uh, just in time, Sam. It's your turn now. Oh, he killed my guy. Yeah, uh, dude. <laughs> all right. Uh, um, if I move to here, I can shoot through here? Uh, yeah. To this guy? Totally can. I will shoot that dude then. I got a 19. You hit him. Okay. I do 10 damage. He's dead. <laughs> I would right. hope so. Uh, we're out of turns now. Cool. So, um, all right, cool. You guys Respect made it through bodies. They, they all um, have the same ceremonial daggers uh, with Yanira carved in them. Uh, also have the same cracks. Uh, some of them look forced and some of them look willing. Hmm. So, um, Daz and Delgon, have you guys ever heard of any lore of, like, a creature using something as a, as a conduit for power from the Nivirum? Let's find out. What, what well, is, uh, okay, I have detect Navarite, but that's not going to... We kind of know they already know that, so... Well, then that spell can help in other ways, maybe. Hmm. It'll detect the number of Navarites in the area and the strength, how strong they are, and if there's any lingering aura. Okay. 
But it does cost you a mana if you want to cast that one. And it would, uh, I guess, it, I don't need the detect magic probably anymore, but I... You I can I, do it again, right? Sure. Or I can switch to detect Wait, magic. is there a limit to those, to the zero mana? Or you just, you can keep casting over and over all day if you want? Correct. That's what makes them awesome. They're, they're only mi of minor use, but you can use them all day long. Right. Um... Well, I have a locate object. That doesn't help. Um, wait, my um, abilities. Is there a knowledge check? You guys let, yeah. No, I'll, I'll roll knowledge to see if I know what, what Eton's talking about. I got a 19. You probably know what Eton's talking about. So, people use... It, I have heard of other creatures turning people into conduits for the Nivirum. Yes. Uh, this thing doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it could be very dangerous. Okay. Like like entire villages being wiped off the map. I just rolled to see if I know this too. You definitely know this. <laughs> and maybe a little bit extra. You, uh, in fact, you, you remember the name of this village. This is called the uh, Favored Bog. It, last time you uh, remember hearing about this, it was a thriving village. Interesting. I, I don't. I keep that secret. I don't. I don't want them to know. Okay. I'm just kidding. I tell them. I <laughs> thought you were trying to spare our morality. <laughs> There's no journal feature in this, is there? Yeah, there is. I can add a journal if you want me to. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right, I'll add a, uh, a handout. So, so with what you guys know, are these the old villagers that are just being used to 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 help this night hag? Like, is this something that night hags do, or is there some other creature that's maybe a companion of the night hag that's doing this and that we're actually sort of walking into a double trap here. Did I roll high enough to know that? Um, no, but Danny did. Okay. Uh, Delgon is definitely aware that this is something night hags do. They, um, they come in, they they come into a village and kind of mess mess shit up, uh, in, in order to maybe pull more Navirum creatures through, or create a, a a good link between the Navirum and the uh, the prime material plane. All right, well. So By the way, just on a quick side note, I've, I've completely missed a few of these uh, once-per-day abilities that I oh, have. Okay. That's, that's, so there is some good stuff in there, some stuff that would have come in handy in that fight. It's all right, me and Tooth had it. But I'm saving it for the big one. Yeah. I know there's Next a fight. boss battle coming. All right, so um, me being a ranger... I'm going to do a, uh, <laughs> uh, Aiden, I almost asked you, is it awareness or survival for doing a track check? <laughs> but, like, I should know that, right? Probably. I should. Um, it's survival. Yeah, it's survival. All right. Oh, dog, it's awareness. I'm just <laughs> All right, survival check four. Uh, I. Uh, nope. Wait, how does that? How did I roll a four when my total bonus is six? I, it thinks your bonus is plus two. So I guess that was a that's a um, that's a that's an eight. All right. Well, I still I was I was looking around to see if I saw any other tracks other than these cultists, but that's that's pretty low. 
Yeah. No. Nope. Um, all right. So I guess how, we'll. How high are these walls? Um. They they uh. It changes depending on how busted they are, but they're they're up to the roof, and this this roof is about thirty feet high. Ma'am. Is the roof intact, or is it also jacked up? There's holes through it. Um, oh, I added that journal entry. Did you yeah, see it? I, I added some stuff. Thank you. Okay. I think I might switch to being on the ceiling. What? Well, what do you mean? Um... Oh, sorry. I, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I actually spider climb. Okay. Um, which is, that's the ability that my cloak gives me is, okay. is all, I have spider climb all the time. Gotcha. So I'll just climb up onto the ceiling. So Danny, you'll see me just like barely touch it with my fingers and clamber up there. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hey. just to just to just to shock the hell out of him. I'm gonna follow him. <laughs> um, if I see Danny cast that spell, I want to see if I can learn spider climb. Okay. All right, I'm gonna cast it. All right. Ah. Uh, what what is this a, for, for my student? <laughs> is this a Lionel Richie video? Come on. <laughs> Wait. I now know spider climb as well as just. Um. Delgon, do you want to dispel your web? Oh. You can just do it. Okay, yeah. Okay. Well, you're on the roof now. Um, you can tell this is this is a grand hallway. It used to be a grand hallway. Uh, there's like faded fresco up top you can't really tell what it used to be but you can tell there used to be fresco there uh, um also as a like a minor role-playing thing if there's any spiders around they feel a little more attracted to hang out with me uh roll charisma for the spiders oh my actual charisma yeah oh god hmm. wow a 13 that's good for me <laughs> uh if if you were at a spider party, you would not be asked to leave. You've not. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <what? laughs> it's just a, a minor quirk. Uh, so I'm going to suggest that me and Delgon stay up here on the ceiling and let Ethan, our warrior tank, just continue on foot and take all the attacks as we shoot things from up here like our wizard selves. Uh, Eton, does that sound all right to you? Sure. Uh, the, these other guys came through the wall up here, right? Like yes. the north? Mm-hmm. Um, and we can't really see what's down this way. It looks like a dais, maybe? Maybe. All right, I'm going to move down this way and check okay. this Oh, it's a it's more of a fountain. Is it working? No, and that water does not look uh, delicious. You you should drink it. Awareness check. Sam, do you have detect poison? Yeah, I detect poison. Yeah, you detect poison. All right, I'll let him know that water is poisonous. Um, but from Eton's awareness, he's pretty sure it's not. I'm going to dip my sword in it. Okay. Cool. You now have a wet sword. All right. I'm going to move up to this area here and peek through this crack. Okay. Um, There's a busted table and chair there. And some, uh, some wood scraps right here. All right. Can I squeeze through there? Is that too small? Uh, You could... Yeah, you can definitely squeeze through there. All right, I'm going to squeeze through. Okay. Um, Is there still ceiling in this part? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, you two can crawl through there up on top of the ceiling. If you so choose. 
freaking I serve cheese. Oh, right. Uh, right here, there's like a ruined um, arch that has fallen down. And there's a door right here. All right. Door here? Uh, no, that's where the ruined arch is. Uh, oh, where's the door? The door is uh, right there. But there's also busted stuff around here. All right. Can you see go. this? Yeah, you can. There's a, there's a, what's the word for it? Trap door right there. All right. I will uh, detect traps on this door here. Uh, the one closest to you? Correct. Okay. Uh, 27. There are no traps in that door. I let uh, e Eton know. And then, uh, am I able to detect traps from up on the ceiling, or do I need to come down? You, you, you definitely need to come down. Okay. You could uh, you could crawl on that door and detect the traps from the door if you want to do that. No. <laughs> um, I'm going to detect poison first. Uh, on the trap door or? On here? Yeah. yeah. There's no poison. Okay. I'll detect traps. I got an 18 for that thing. You're pretty sure there's no traps, too. Okay. I'll say my meager abilities detect no traps on either door. All right. Uh, I think we need to head down. Um, I'll check to see if this door is locked. Uh, it's not. Okay, I'll, I'll tell uh, Eton, you can just open that door in front of you. It's not locked. I kick it down. All right, you bust this door down. Um, 17 strength check. You definitely bust this door down. By the way, I'm going to go ahead and drop down. There's kind of no point in me being up here anymore. Okay. Um, you had you had you had fun. That was the point. It was fun. <laughs> I hang going, from I hang from the ceiling just for a little bit. For you're like sweet and then dude. I drop down. <laughs> Is this thing the cellar thing locked? Yes. All right, I'll attempt to pick the lock. Okay, uh, make a reflex save for me. All right, I got a twenty-eight on my thief roll. Uh, for future reference, hold on. Okay. Please. Reflex save, which is, oh, I gotta look at this computer sheet. I currently have a plus 10 to my reflex save. Okay. I got a 28 on both rolls, actually. All right. So you, you get, uh, the, the lock is in the trap door and you, you undo it and you quickly move your hand back as a dart shoots, uh, through the lock and onto the ceiling above. Well, it's a good thing Delgar wasn't on that ceiling. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but I, I also got the lock open. You definitely got the lock open. All right, I, I paused for a second, and then I am going to step back, and I'll say to Eton, the lock's open, and though I triggered the trap, it shouldn't harm anyone uh, anymore. Open the door. I'm gonna, this is a wall right here, right? I'm going to get right there between it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going back to the ceiling. <laughs> but that's where the last dart went. Yeah, but I'm over here. Not, okay. Not here. I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I kick the doors open. Okay. Roll, roll uh, athletics. Uh, syntax error. Uh, my athletics is plus eight. Twenty six. Yeah, you kick the shit out of that door. You're good. Um, give me a second, and I'll move you guys to the other, the next map. Despite having a ten in thievery, I'm not very good at using it. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're just as good as me right now, basically. Hey, uh, I have to use the bathroom. I'll be right back. <laughs> 
Sure. Oh, I just kicked a dog. It's dark in here. Ah, oh, poor dog. Mike, I don't know what level you're thinking about taking on old Ethan here, but uh, I think you should you should take Rogue next. I think he's gone. Oh, is he? <laughs> yeah. Oh no, he's there. No, I'm here. I, I think you should another beer. I think you should take your level eight in Rogue on Eton, because then you, you and uh, your Luminar buddy Delgon would have all the skills you need to do this thing. Yeah, that or Delgon just nuts up and starts doing something. <laughs> well, if he had, if he had this, does he have the spell find traps? I don't know. Wait, why is why is Delgon's camera so dark? Did he walk off with his candle? <laughs> if he comes back wearing a night robe with one of those long caps, I'm just gonna fall out of my chair laughing. All right, uh, so is there a way for me to move, like, where the map appears in this dark area, or is it always just in the same position? No, there's there's scroll bars on the right and left. Mm -hmm. Oh, that just lets me scroll in or out? Oh, uh, if you hold shift, you can scroll left and right. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, I can't see anything. <laughs> zoom, zoom out and see where you're at. All right, and so shift, and then I scroll where? Uh, it's, we're in the top, top left. And I wish it were like Photoshop, where I just did. Yeah. See. There we go. Um, oh, God, there is a tool like that. All right, I'm I'm good to go. Cool. You guys should see be seeing a hallway in like another like log, kind of further up. Is that what you're seeing? Yep. All right, good. Cool. It's working right. It's really interesting that um, on the last map for you, when we would leave a room, it would stay there grayed out, but whenever I've used Roll Twenty, when you move through a room, it just disappears after you've been through it. Um, did you have, like, Fog of War clicked on or something? Is that how that showed uh, up like that? I have no idea. Hmm. So so when you went through, it was dark before you went through it? Yeah, so, like, it was all completely black, but once we'd been through an area, it would still show it, but it'd be grayed out. And the only stuff that we saw was, like what was in color so it let us know where still our vision was and i wonder if that's a new feature because i've never seen that before in roll it 20. might be a new feature i don't have i don't have fog of war i have advanced fog of war on um but i think oh no i don't have fog of war on hmm. that well, might I have to play around see what's happening with that yeah um Delgon, you could also, seeing that you uh, fight with your quarterstaff, you may consider casting bull strength on yourself now. Uh, yeah, I, um, <coughs> I, I, I wouldn't melee often. I just uh, didn't see anything that would be much help and figured I'd smack the one closest. But, um... How, how many? Uh, I don't have the, the spell description. How is it? A is it a low minus spell? It gives you. It's three mana, and it gives you a D four plus one to your strength. And it la for you. It'll last for eight hours. So, all day. Um, all right. Sure. Why not? Cool. All right, and um, uh, let's see. Three mana. If I can find it. And then, um, and you said it's what? D4 plus one. D4 plus one what? That's to your strength. Oh, so I, right now I roll for, for the next eight hours. That'll be, it's what it'll be. Yep. All right. Uh, D4. Nice. 
Well, it's a Let's... one, but still. So. And oh, what's, uh, what does a 16 give me? What's the ability modifier? Plus three. All right. Everything should be on right. So, Delgon, you have both strength on now? Yep. Okay. Give you that flexing icon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have cat's grace on me. Is there a cat grace icon? Oh, I've been using that uh, that feather that yeah. Eton has on him. All right. All right, cool. All right, uh, so we're good. Uh, you walk down this the the ladder and this trap door, and um, this the, the the green stone of what seems to have been a crypt, uh, but now just looks like a, a defiled mess surrounds you. Uh, you can see some light coming in from this way. Um. How high is the walls and ceiling? Uh, 20 feet. Okay. Um, does, uh, my, is my detect Navirite, does it run over time? As long as I you can... concentrate. When did I cast it? Would I still have it or should I cast it again? Uh, what's the duration on it? Oh, yeah, no, a concentration up to one minute per level. Okay. Which, so you, in real time, it's only been a few minutes, but I guess the question is whether I could have been concentrating. Mm -hmm. Probably couldn't have uh, because of that fight and that you were casting other spells while you were doing this. All right, well, it's just one, so I'm going to go ahead and cast it and uh, uh, maintain it for a bit. Okay. I'm going to switch to Detect Magic. Okay. Um. So I, I'm, I'm going to prep, uh, put my sword away and pull out my bow uh, and knock up one of my uh, barbed iron arrows. Okay. Uh, those of you who have Detect Magic can't. Uh, detect any magic just yet uh you can well not, not any like big concentration of magic you can detect it in the air like it's flowing through but and and the navirite detection you can definitely detect that down here that's um down the hall all right can, uh how how accurate uh sense can it give me like can i tell sort of how far precisely um, where this is going to be because then I can let let Atan know what we're expecting. It, it's not super accurate, but from what you can gather, it it gets stronger as you go further down the hall. Uh, so okay, and uh, it also tells me um, detect aura. Oh oh. Okay, so each round, it's going to tell me more. The first round, presence or absence. So that's that's this uh -huh. round. Uh, next round will be auras in the area or the strength of the strongest aura present. So that's the part I'm curious about. So uh, next round, I uh, want to get a sense of how strong this might be. So uh, I want to use my thievery. Uh, and sneak up to like right here. Okay. All right, so D20 plus 10, 27. 27, all right. Uh, you sneak up there. Um, you're pretty sure nobody heard you. Uh, if you want to roll awareness for me. All right. Uh, you're also pretty sure there's no one around to hear you. So that's good. <laughs> Am I sure? <laughs> um, so, uh, Delgon, uh, th 
from where you're at, there's not a high strength of the spell. Um, and you can you can now you've been detecting long enough where you can get the um, the school of magic. It's a conjuration. Okay. Um, I am going to cast bark skin on myself. Okay. All right. Do you guys want me to keep going? Uh, but, well, real quick, because I think you said I think you said my name, but uh, uh, Daz has the detect magic. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> Navarite should tell me the strength of the strongest Navarite in the area. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. I don't know how you describe that to me, but yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, is there um like a page I can read real quick? Mike? Uh, nope, this is really just fiction for the, the game master. I, I didn't really define this, so okay, you can give us as, little as just, much as you want. It's on page 60 if you want to read Detect Navarite. Oh, hey, Googling it. Yeah, no, it actually says here, uh, there's a table. H. I don't know what this means, though. Hit die. So aura strength is an aura determined by the hit die of the creature as given on the following table. So what's, uh, well. So, so the, so the way the description is faint, moderate, strong, and that's determined by those numbers. Yeah. Oh, I'm also going to roll to learn to text Navi, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, to, uh, if two, uh, Luminars spend just a little bit of time together, they're going to become identical. <laughs> uh, is there a range on that detect Navarite? 60 feet. 60 feet? Okay. You can't detect a Navarite nearby. Then. <laughs> okay. But I'm maintaining it. Regardless. Okay, yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to sneak up to right here. Okay. Well, that thievery. Oh, all right. Fourteen. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm also gonna be sneaking. You do it. But I'm gonna be on the walls. Like with spider clam. Yep. Okay. Like, like creepy, like some yep. creepy stuff happening. <laughs> <laughs> I got a 25. All right. You're good. <laughs> um, so, uh, Eitan, uh, in this room, you see, uh, like a, like a glowing mushroom coming out of this, um, log over here. And that's what's, what's causing the, the light. I want to go harvest that for later. Okay. Uh, do I have to roll anything to cut it and safely put it in my pouch? Uh, no, but I want you to make a fortitude save for me. Ooh. What was it again you found? Uh, a glowing mushroom. A glowing mushroom. I rolled okay. a big 16. Okay, you're going to take half this damage. All right. Um, the mushroom just starts screaming. Uh, or like whenever you go to to cut it off its stem, it just starts screaming. Like how big was it? It was um no, nah, it was about the size of like a mu a little mushroom. It's a little purple mushroom emitting light. And it starts screaming. Yeah. All right. How much damage like do I take? <laughs> uh, <laughs> none, I guess, because I rolled a one for damage. Yeah, because I got like a a damage reduction four. Yeah. So it you you. I assume you quickly cut it off when you hear it screaming to make it stop. Yeah, I just stomp on it. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh crap, that's screaming. And yeah. your first instinct is just like, nope, but you squish it. Yeah. <laughs> there, 
That is not something I want to carry around in my pouch. <laughs> um, Dogon and Daz, can you make uh, perception checks for me? You heard the screaming. This is for something else. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, you said perception? Uh, awareness. Mm-hmm. Ah. By the way, I rolled a 24 on squishing that shroom. You squished that shroom. All right. I was so hoping that that was Del- Delgon's uh, perception. <laughs> oh, God. We're like the two two wizards can't see in front of our faces. You guys got uh, deafened by the, the screech. Oh, wait. Like. Does, Tooth, does Tooth get an awareness? Sure. All right. <laughs> what is his awareness? Come on. Come on, Tooth. Come on, Tooth. We're counting on you. No uh, pressure. Plus two. Uh, three. Oh. He got a three. Tooth is also uh, not pleased about that that yeah, screech. He's totally a cat. Like like that scream happened. His like back's arched. He's just like. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's on that twenty four was your squishing the mushroom. Yes. So uh, go ahead and roll uh, another perception for me. But get it. Give yourself a negative two. All right. Awareness. I mean, it yeah. I, I, yeah. All right, so 19 minus 2 is 17. Okay. Um, you can hear some 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 footsteps coming down the halls. Footsteps? Yep. Can I detect anything yet? Uh, yeah, you detect the conjuration magic coming from over there. No, no, uh, never right. Never right? Oh, crap. <laughs> well... <laughs> You cannot detect anything yet. Okay. Sam can detect conjuration magic coming from <laughs> down there. One of these days I'll get it. I wonder, <laughs> is there, like, do I have to shout something or could my animal companion warn you guys somehow? Uh, you'd have to shout because your animal companion doesn't know. No, we have a link. Animal oh, companions dear. have a link. Um, I can suggest an a- action their animal companion as a free action, and there's a favorable understanding and bond between the two. Um, Status? I, I am going to uh, tell Tooth to uh, quietly hiss and look down the hallway towards the footsteps. Ah. Do I have to roll to see if he favorably does that, or does he just do it? You can just do it. All right. Do they need to roll an awareness to see if they understand? Nah, he's good to do. he's good to go. I know what he is. Over here. Yeah. The same place that I sensed the conjuration magic. Yes. Okay. All right. Do we need to roll initiative or or? Uh, not just yet. I'll let I'll let uh, I'll let you go, and uh, check check over there before you. You're the one with the torch, so. That's true. Uh, hey, I, I'm actually uh, going to. I'm actually uh, one second. Let me let me read this one before I do it. Now let me find this one. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. I am going to. I'm going to cast invisibility. I'm trying to decide if I should cast it on myself or if I should cast it on Etan for scouting purposes. To sort of go ahead. Well, don't. We got something coming, so don't cast that on me. I'm going to run to right here. Um, No, I don't have the selector thing. To right there. If that's okay, Aiden. Yeah. Try to attract whatever this is towards me. Okay, you won right there, so that's your turn for this. Um, okay, I'm going to cast Invisibility on myself. All right, Delgon casts Invisibility on himself, and that's his turn. Uh, Daz, what are you doing? Um, what, what, now that I can see these little dudes here and here, uh-huh. what do they look like? They, um, they look like people, townsfolk. Their skin is uh, orange and yellowed, and they seem to have wounds on them. 
Um, make an awareness check. These awareness are wound. these are wounds that would kill a person. It, a knowledge check to see if I can figure out what these are. Okay. Thirteen. Yeah, uh, those are zombies. Oh, that easy. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, all right. Uh, we can roll initiative. I am, I am going to cast a... Uh, oh, do I want to cast it now? They're just zombies. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Wait, Delgon, how'd you just get 11.01? <laughs> I, I, I well, I hadn't tested yet, but I actually have an initiative button in the top left. Just says initiative, and I just mine's eleven point oh five. Yeah, it's not working. There's something weird with yeah, it. Yeah, and I don't, <laughs> I don't think it knows my stuff. So, well, your bonus is is in there is plus five, but it's like all we've ever gotten. Oh, oh, I know what I wanted to do. I'm sorry, I wanted to cast reduce. Okay, yeah, you can go ahead and do that. You didn't use your, your turn, really. Okay, sweet. You can use this thing. I'm going to have to so ask Should him. I leave this or, or, or redo it? I don't know. I just rolled it a couple times, and it looks like I am rolling random numbers. But they're all .05. Go ahead oh, and keep a, I got a note point oh one. Whatever. You're only getting point oh five. It's fine. <laughs> what's, what's your initiative modifier? Um, I bet you it's plus one. one. Yeah, plus one. So it's messing up in the math there, and it's adding a point zero, and then our initiative modifier. So it's like when we roll eleven. Right, so we actually, gotta redo it. Yeah, it's not yeah. rolling right. All right. So this one's my initiative. All right, Danny rolled a ten. Ton rolled an 18. Okay. Tooth rolls a 21. Nice. I have a 19. Okay. Off of an 8. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> All right. And then uh, I don't know how to figure it in here, but I have my attacks I'll just I'll just write down my current attack so it's plus range touch is plus 12 plus 9 11 okay well tooth gets to go first all right so, uh, let's see. Oh, they're out of his pounce range. Damn. So he's going to actually have to move. Uh, his speed is 40, though, so he can easily uh, get up to this one. And he will do his two claws, uh, which are at plus 8. All right, so 16 and 13. Yep, they hit. All right. And so then it's one. Let's see. So, uh, so he did rolled a three on the first claw, two on the second one. And then he also has the ability to try to grab. So he's going to try to do a heroic action. Uh, to grab a hold of the zombie and just, like, grip onto its face uh, using his dex. Okay. So that'll be a d20 plus 2. So he rolls an 18 on his grab check. Uh, yeah. That succeeded the grapple. All right. So Tooth is just, like, clawed into this zombie and not letting go then okay <laughs> he gets no bonuses for doing it but he can just do it all right 
falls into his face. All right. All right. Uh, Daz, go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm actually on the wall. Yeah, you're on the wall right there. My bad. I, I, can, I can be right there. So I'm actually in a square. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy, the tooth just jumped, is in my range. So I'll do my mage uh, energy burst, uh, which is a range touch attack. Okay. I hit a 22. Yep. Range touch. That hits. Or 2d4 plus 2. Ooh, I rolled a 1 and a 1. Uh, so 4 damage. Okay. Uh, you hit this thing in the... You just hit him, and he he's still hobbling along. With a cat on his face. With a cat on his face. Uh, neither... Right. It hasn't reacted to either uh, sources of damage. Um, I'll also uh, climb all the way up to where I'm touching the ceiling, so I'm 20 feet off the ground. Sorry, I'm checking this thing's speed to make sure I have it right. Okay. All right. Uh, Etan, it's your turn. All right. Uh, first, I'm going to roll a knowledge check real quick. Um, my knowledge is three. Okay. Uh, I rolled a 14. I want to see if, in the heat of battle, if Atan remembers that it would be better to attack these things with his sword. Yeah, you would definitely remember that. All right, so uh, Bo swings around and clips onto his uh, his uh, back bow sheath sword. Dad's broad sword comes out, <laughs> and he runs. I'm going to just run that into the ground, I'm just saying, guys. <laughs> uh, and he runs up and attacks him. Um, so that will be, uh, 1D. So the first attack will be 21. That's second a hit. attack will be, uh, 10, uh, 15. Those both hit. All right. And so that's, uh. So I do 14 damage and 15 damage. He's dead. All right. So I, I, uh, I, I first, uh, and I feel bad about doing this because this used to be a villager, but at the same time, it's an undead zombie whore right now. So uh, first, I chop off its head, and then I chop off its legs just to make sure it's not moving anymore. <laughs> Blood squirts on you, but you're like, you feel good about it. You're like, yeah, I got him. One more thing that's not wrecking this world. <laughs> All right, Delgon, it's your turn. Um, so you have a lot of these creatures here, but I'm only seeing one dead and two alive on the screen. Is, is that basically what I can see? I see one guy vaguely in the distance. Yeah, there. Are, uh, you can tell there are more from the shuffling. And in what direction does it seem like there are a lot of them? Or can uh, I tell? There are more coming from that way than down there. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, there aren't any, any open doors around here, right? These are just open corridors. Uh, correct. Okay. Um, An object or a 10 foot square. Okay. I'm going to cast a uh, grease. Oh, nice. Right. And you can see this right where I'm drawing right uh, there. I, I don't know how you guys. Have you let it um, like. Okay. I see that ping. Oh, yeah. that was me. You hold oh. down your left mouse button, Danny, to uh, to show us whoa, where you want to Ah, when I scroll, when I try to move this thing, it just keeps going off the screen. It's really hard to control. All right, so uh, right here. Wait, did you see that? No. I double click. No, I didn't see no, that. No, you don't double you click. Know. You hold yeah, down the mouse. Yeah. There we go. There we go. 
right okay. there. Okay, and those four squares right there? Let me do it one more time, right there. Okay, so like there. That's right. Cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna change that. And color. by the way, this this uh this shouldn't affect. I'm still invisible. This shouldn't affect my invisibility. No. It only direct attacks affect the the that then I come out. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, when I get to that point, since I'm catching them off guard, are there any bonuses? It doesn't have anything. But if I uh, that if, initial attack coming out of invisibility. If these were regular people, then yes. But since they're undead, they don't really take sneak attack damage. I don't think that's that's, that's how that works. No, that's not how that works. That's different in a different system. Yes, it, you would get a bonus. A sneak attack bonus? Yes. Oh, okay. All right, but for now, that was my turn, I think. Yeah, that is your turn. Uh, you can use movement. You still have a move action. Yeah, actually, I am going to... Uh, how many spaces do I move in a turn? Six. In that case, I'm going to get up here. Right there. And uh, since the guy, since there's one guy in the grease currently, um, he'll have to roll or fall. Right. The the what's the DC on that reflex? Yeah, I'm, uh, I lost it. Hang on. It's fine. Uh, it's not relevant right at this moment. I'll, I'll go through some turns. Uh, it is a it's a DC ten balance check. Okay. So another guy is going through the grease. Oh, and if it a failure means it can't move that round and must make a reflex save or fall, while failure by five or more means. And you said it was fifteen. So I guess there's a reflex check first. If it saves, it still has to do a balance check, right? Am I reading? Am I understanding that right? Yeah. So this guy fell over. And uh, this zombie down here is going to attack Tooth. No. He does not attack Tooth, even though it's right on his face. <laughs> he hits himself in the eye. <laughs> it's like brains. <laughs> Just blood splatters out. <laughs> Definitely not the cat's blood. Yeah. You definitely don't want to roll a one when you're swinging into your own head. Nope. Uh, what was the DC on that grease spell again? Uh, it's a... What's the mana? It's... Hang on, because I... All right, so it's a little com complex. Okay. A creature can walk within or through the half normal speed with a DC 10 balance check. Okay. And then failure means it can't move. So if it fails the check, it can't move that round and then must make a reflex save or fall. And if it fails by files automatically. Okay. Well, this guy passed then. So the uh, reflex save for a one mana, I think it's 13. No, it's 14. At speed. Okay. Uh, one of them fell over. I guess I should have put it closer to to a ton. Oh well. Uh, and two more walk through the grease, and one of them's hitting a ton. Trying. Is that a nineteen? Nope, that's not a hit. All right, it's Tooth's turn. All right, he's just latched in, so uh, let me pull up his sheet. Um, <laughs> he's going to uh, wind up like that cat on that, uh, that video. He's going to rear back and then come down <laughs> and bite the thing in the face. <laughs> All right. Uh, he rolled a 19. That's a hit. All right. 
So he gets 1d4 plus 2, does 6 points of damage to that thing. <laughs> yeah, um, that thing doesn't have a face anymore. Yes, go tooth. I see it happen. Animal <laughs> Link, I just watched that happen. <laughs> the um, the white on tooth's skin is now stained in like an orange, unhealthy blood. It's all right. He can wash off in the poison pool we saw earlier. Well, you have that yeah, that wet blade. Just wipe him down with the wet blade. <laughs> <laughs> um, Daz, go ahead. Um, I'm going to hit this zombie here. Okay. With a range touch attack. 17. That hits. Not bad for rolling a 5. Nope. Not bad at all. Let's see if we do any damage this time. That's a little better. Six damage. That's pretty good. Um, so, Danny, what, what I'm throwing are just, we have that energy burst power that we can just do all day long. Is that what you're throwing? Yep. And I'm, I think I'm making them, uh, we'll make, we'll say that's green fire. Okay. Yeah, there's definitely green fire on these guys. You can uh, see they don't catch, it doesn't catch anything on fire. It's mostly just, if they're immune to an energy type or whatever, but gotcha. Well, uh, it's on, go ahead. All right. So, uh, I reach down, I grab this small clay bottle on my belt and I look at this guy right here. Who's in the middle of all them, that guy, uh -huh. and I'm like, Hey, ugly, what's that on your face? And I throw the clay bottle at his face and it's <laughs> alchemist fire. <laughs> I'm also going to roll for that grease spell. Okay. Nope. All right, so that's a ranged touch attack. So yeah. my base That's going to provoke an attack of opportunity because there's a guy right next to you. Doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, points, points for style in my world. Oh, you're right, dude. Uh, I think this is going to be great. So uh, that's a D20 plus 12. Uh, so I rolled a 22 range touch attack on this guy in the middle. Yeah, you hit him, and you're going to hit the guys next to him, too. Yeah, yeah, it busts right open. So that does uh, just 1d6 worth of damage on him. Um, Go ahead and roll. So uh, did three points damage to the guy in the middle, and then one splash damage. The guy's next to him. Yep. Uh, they're on fire. Um, they don't seem to react, but the guy in front of you seems um, almost hurt that you called him ugly. Oh, no, it wasn't, not that guy, the, the guy in the middle. That's the one I called ugly. Yeah, but he didn't know. You were, like, pointing, and he didn't know if you were pointing at him or the guy behind him. I don't even know if he's aware if there's a guy behind him. <laughs> All right, that's fine. He can take it out on me. Bring your best. <laughs> Come on, zombie, roll that 25. I know you always wished you could. He got a, he had a 21 for the attack of opportunity. He did not hit you. So, Delgon, go ahead. So, the guy with tooth on him hasn't moved at all. Right. He's been, he's staying there and he's attacking this cat on him. The, the three down this hall are uh, damaged. They might be. Yes. Okay. Uh, right around. Uh, here. Oh, wait. You gotta hold it. Here. There you go. Um, I'm going... Hang on, hang on. I'm making sure it's not around me. Okay. No, it does look like it's... All right, so I'm gonna say, um, uh, uh, hey, jerks, how about that weather? And I'm gonna do Call of the Elements... <laughs> Jerks, man, you don't know what they're really like. I mean, they could be nice guys, you know, once you look past their ugly mugs. That's why he said jerks and not asshole. He wanted to, like, keep it to where he could backpedal. Right. <laughs> he didn't want to burn those bridges. Yeah. <laughs> so that's going to hit th these these two guys. Uh, in, the, in the middle, right there? Yeah, and I 
I think they're just dead. Okay. Um, it's, <laughs> we'll roll for good measure, but yeah. I think they're just dead. What's the spell called? Uh, uh, Call of the Elements. All right. It's one of my once per days. It's a raging storm. I'm going to do uh, 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 ice because the weather thing. Okay. Otherwise, my one-liner doesn't work. <laughs> I can also do air, but I like this. I like ice. And uh, let's see, eight. Um, plus eight. There's damage on one. And there's the other. Damn. Yeah, they're, they're just dead. How much? That's call element? Call of the elements. It's, uh, I think the level seven Luminar ability. No, level eight. Oh, the Luminar ability, not the, uh, it's not a spell. Because there's a right. spell called Call Element, so that's what I was looking up. So I can't learn it, is what I'm figuring out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it's a Much to Mike's dismay. <laughs> oh, and I guess I'm not invisible anymore. Nope, not anymore. But you did fuck up two zombies. That's right. So I think it's worth it. Yeah. <clears throat> now the pressure's on Daz to have a good one-liner. Yep. Not that, oh, not that the ones so far have been good. <laughs> yeah, you got a top. Hey, jerks, what about that weather? <laughs> you should have cast, like, acid just to, like, fuck with them. All right, this guy passed his roll to stand up, but that's his action because zombies have one action. <laughs> Man, Grease really, really jacks up a zombie. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, wait, is there now another zombie here? Yeah, uh, some, one of them moved in from the hall. Oh, okay. And the zombie's trying to hit. Oh, he critically failed, and he's going to hit himself. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Do we want to pull up the fumble chart? I like this fumble, because he's trying to hit his own face. With the cat? It's the one with the cat yeah. on his head. Oh, okay. Yeah, he does a whopping two damage. So he's not trying really hard to hit the cat, I guess. I think he, he liked cats in another life. Or maybe it was the crazy cat lady of the village. <laughs> <laughs> but the guy in front of uh, Etan is going to hit, going to try to hit, going to gonna miss real bad. So Tooth, it's your turn. All right. So uh, Tooth's going to do two claw attacks. But um, what he's going to do is, you know, like when, when you're too close to a cat and he gets pissed and he starts kicking you with his back legs? Uh He's going to have both his cl front claws on either side of the zombie head. He's gonna, just going to bring up his back legs and start kicking the hell out of the zombie's face. Fuck yeah. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shred the zombie's face. All right. 16 and 23. <laughs> Those hit. All right. Does one damage. Oh. And three damage. That's enough to kill it. <laughs> yeah. You get into this zombie's head and just start, start. He starts back kicking the, the, the brains out of the zombie and it falls. I guess he's feline that. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, Daz, it's your turn. I'll uh, hit that dude with range touch. All right. Uh, 14. That hits him. 
Okay, so as long as I don't roll a one, I'm now determined that I can hit because I just rolled a two. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll do, whoa, seven damage. All right. Ooh. We need to get like a live studio audience to applaud every time someone does damage. <laughs> uh, it's on. Oh, it's me. All right. Um, well, I've used up all my, my cool stuff, so I'm just going to uh, attack with the broadsword. Uh, What's that this- called? The broad sword. <laughs> yeah, I was like, is this a different weapon from the one you've been using? <laughs> the best thing about being a monster hunter is dad's broad sword. All right, so uh, 22 and a 26. Uh, those both hit. I assume those hit. Yep. Um, so let's bring in some uh, D8 damage plus 7. Don't forget your uh, extra strength modifier right now. Oh no, it's in there. Sweet. Yeah, because I'm my ability modifier is seven, so I do twelve and fifteen damage. Yeah, that's dead. Wait, you said your ability modifier is seven. Don't forget your bonus for it being a magical broadsword. Oh yeah, it would be a lot more. It's dead anyways, but. Oh, yeah, so it's eight. actually eight. Did you did you take weapon specialization? Um, no, I don't believe so. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> you just did what twenty seven damage to oh, that dude? Shit! And uh, my second favorite enemy is undead, so that actually did. Uh, 14 and 17 damage. So you you actually melted him, is what you're saying? <laughs> I just sort of held out the sword, and he just fell into it like two times massively. <laughs> he was like, all right, I'm not putting up a fight. I know where this is going up. And he just, <laughs> he's dead. All right, Delgon, go ahead. Is a favorite enemy something everybody's supposed to get? No, no it's not. That's just a ranger thing. Mm. Uh, okay. Uh, this is the last guy in the grease. There's, two, there's another guy. one. Yeah, by the pillar. All right, this guy right here. Uh, I'm gonna go here, and uh, I'm gonna sweep the legs. Okay, you're gonna try to trip him. With well, no, I'm I'm, I'm gonna hit him. Okay. <laughs> With my staff. Full on blow. But I'm going to aim yeah. it at the legs. Okay. So you're going to hit him um, with your staff as a full on blow. Sorry. <laughs> full on blow away, staff boy. <laughs> it's, a, it's a quarter of a staff. Oh, it's oh, okay. I, I forgot you're a grower, not a shower. <laughs> All right, hang on, hang on. I got to focus. All right, I get um Crap, I keep losing my It was a plus 7. Oh, no. oh uh I get Oh, that's right. I get um that's to hit. So I get a Oh, I put a I'm sorry. I put a a bonus a temporary bonus for that spell in the wrong place. I now I see. Oh, okay. It. All right, so yeah, I get a plus 7 on the roll. Nice. Uh, D twenty one. You hit him. All right, and then that's where I get the extra bonus. It's going to be one D six plus six. Okay. Because I have that bull strength. Right. Nice. Wow, max damage. Yeah, you uh, you definitely kneecap this guy. I'm hoping the legs come off. They 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 fly. <laughs> they uh, they hit this this pillar right here. There's a blood stain right here now. <laughs> I'll go ahead and draw that too. Also, we're uh, we're I, I, I turn to a ton and do a bodybuilder flex. <laughs> All right. He thinks he thinks I can't. He thinks I can't fight. 
He's wrong, dude. Atan didn't even notice. Oh. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm facing the other way. I'm doing some, like, you know, yeah, bell, bane, right. bell bane damage this way. Wait, 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 wait. I cast, uh, I can duplicate myself with one of these, so I can go in front of him. And do the <laughs> I kid, go ahead. Okay. Tooth, it's, it's Tooth's turn. Um, let me check uh, Night Cats. They have uh, low light vision and scent, so he's going to um, he's gonna see if there's anything down this hallway that he can sniff. Does he smell anything? Down that hallway? Yeah. Uh, dead uh, bodies. Hmm. Okay. Uh, he he's gonna hold his action. Okay. Uh. Oh, stop. Ah. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> what was that? That was, was a that, sneeze. Was that the battle cry? This last zombie. <laughs> yeah. Sneeze attack. <laughs> uh, make a fortitude save. You're now poison. Uh, that's going. <laughs> I rolled a 24 fortitude save. Ain't nothing. Nah, you don't get my cold. I'll range touch that dude. <laughs> All right. Twenty six. Definitely hit him. Six damage. Nice. All right. Wait, do these uh, guys fall down and bleed when they're? Done? Yeah. Where'd you get these guys at? Uh, oh, let me... F I can... I, give me one second. Oh, you can just tell me tomorrow, but that's pretty cool. They're a great token pack. Uh, they're called, uh... I don't know. Yeah, I'll just... I'll let you know later. But every token comes with a, a separate dead uh, animation. Nice. Or, like... Yeah. So I don't have to use the big red X... Oh, yeah, you'll notice now that I'm over here next to you, Delgon, that I'm, like, currently, with how tall am I? I'm about three feet tall currently. <laughs> he's, he's also a grower, not a shower. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a shrinker, not a winker. <laughs> oh, weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, Atan's up. All right, now that he's realized that these guys are, are undead, he's going to roll even higher. So it's a D20 plus 17 um, and a D20 plus 12. Uh, so, so basically, just don't just don't fumble. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I did! Oh! A 34 and a 1. So we'll just deal with damage on that first one, and then we'll deal with the fumble. Yep. Um, I, I'm sorry I spoke. I did that too. <laughs> All right, so that first attack did 17 points of damage. Okay, let's see what the fumble did. All right, and uh, I roll a D100. 86. So that is 14. Uh, why do you keep hitting yourself? You're confused for one round. Oh, that doesn't even matter because this guy's dead. So, good. You got out. You got off. Pretty. Right, that thirty-four I was so was such a hit that I just I just confused the shit out of myself. <laughs> no, in fact, yeah, come to think of it, if the first hit hit him, then the second hit didn't. He wouldn't have even ro made that roll. Right. So he no. hit the wall. No, he he's swinging wall. like a motherfucker. He rolled yeah. even if it's dead. Like you <laughs> just swinging. So he hit the wall, and he was like, "What the hell." And this is a zombie. Punch. So from our perspective, he just killed the guy and started punching himself. Look, <laughs> look, what do you not understand about favored enemy? These guys are going down and then down a little further. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we're out of rounds. Um, if you want to make awareness checks to see if there are any anything else coming at you, you, you may. Uh, 
Uh, yes. I got a four. I rolled a natural one. You are perfectly safe. <laughs> wow. Are you serious? <laughs> uh, good, guys. I Just so you know, uh, confusion... Um, I, I just babble incoherently for uh, six seconds, and then I'm out of it. Damn, dude. I smack him for his own good. Snap out of it. He snaps out. You do good, Danny. <laughs> uh, Eton, can you check this passage? All right. Uh, first, I'm gonna roll my uh, my thievery. Uh, one try, stay quiet. Oh, it's plus ten. That's what it was. So sixteen as I move up to here. Okay. Uh, you get a, a nice whiff of decaying corpses as you walk down there. All right, um, so my cat has uh, dark vision, 20 feet. Is that it? No, dark vision. How far is dark vision? Usually 60 feet, but... No, he has, no, he has low light vision, so he won't be able to see without me around, right? Right. So he'll come back. All okay. right. All right, so we have two passageways, a small uh, one and a big one. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm going to recast. I would have lost concentration, but I'm going to recast Detect uh, Navarite as we, as we go through here. Okay. Um, let me get that ruler out. Yeah, you can't detect anything yet. Okay. But the fact that you just got a ruler out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to detect something soon, guys. You're getting there. Uh, what do you guys think? Should we go down these small passageways or down the big one? Um, you, s you detected nothing but death down the small hallway, right? Yeah, it just smells bad. And I suggest we go this way. There's nothing we can do for the dead. All right. Uh, 29 on my sneak check. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move up to right here. Uh, I'm also going to do... Those are some more of those shrieking mushrooms. Uh, I stay away from them. going to go through this way. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> Let's do an awareness check. Uh, Twenty. Uh, do I see any traps or anything? Or uh, no, but you you notice this tile is uh, up. You're not sure if it's broken or if there's something down there on on the dirt. So you could check under there if you'd like. Oh, I could. Uh. Yeah, let's roll another awareness check, and I'll check underneath the, the tile. Okay. 16. Yeah, just, just some more shrinker mushrooms under there. Can I jump over them? You can. Make uh, acrobatics. All right, I, I do some hand signals to them to show them, like, mushroom coming up through, and then you have to leap over <laughs> <laughs> Are there, um, uh, Delgon, you might have to explain that to Daz. You're very, you're used to my hand signals and stuff, so. Uh, <laughs> Daz, how long does that comprehend languages still? <laughs> Last. Uh, I, based on, I'm, I'm rough estimate. I still got about forty minutes left. Okay, yeah, you, you would comprehend this then. <laughs> um, Wait, yeah, I'm staying. I'm um, climbing the walls. Still, uh, Sam so is frozen I'll just climb on my around screen. It. There's no mushrooms on the walls over here. Is he not on yours? He's on ours. Uh, yeah, try we're refreshing. Yeah, you guys 
Oh. <laughs> check, check, check. check. I can hear you, Sam. Danny can't hear you. Can you hear me, Sam? Yeah, I can't hear Danny, though. Can, Aiden, can you hear me? All right, yeah. there we go. Uh, Are we all good? I think I hear everybody. Mike, say something. Yo. All right, we're good. So over here, if I climb the ceiling, are there mushrooms on the ceiling or the wall in this area? No, you're good. If you're if you're on the walls and the then the ceiling, you're fine. Okay. And by the way, uh, my um, I should still have a uh, uh, the spider climb. It lasts a long time. I think a long time. Yeah, ten minutes per level. So you have it for an hour and a half. Yeah, you're good. Right. <laughs> Um, I think you can also cast it on Mike. I don't need yeah, it. That don't, right? That's too unnatural. Uh, 26 acrobatics to jump over. Yeah, you jump over. In fact, that's enough to jump four squares. So. Uh, one, two, three, four. So you're. Oh, you're right yeah, you're right there. All right. Uh, Tooth's gonna do it. Sixteen. Yep. That enough. All right. Um. All right. I'm gonna be sneaking again. Uh, but I'm just gonna spider climb around it, so I'm. That's good, right? Yep. You'll be fine. Okay. My goal is to come up to here and see what's going on. Uh, thievery check. Be twenty-two. Okay. Okay. Um, hold on. And don't forget to detect Navarite. Oh, you detect Navarite around that corner now. Uh, to the right or left? To the right. So this All right, one? I motion to a time. Yeah, that one. Uh, can you see that, that room yet? Nope. No. All right, what about now? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you see this. Um, there's a green pool, uh, a hag dipping this this man, forcing him to uh, to drink the water from the pool. There's some um, townsfolk zombies scattered around the room, and you can see some actual like townspeople towards the back. Oh, there's people still alive? Yeah. Okay, um, really quickly then, I'm going to cast the haste spell because uh, it'll currently affect all of us before we enter into this combat. Okay. Assuming that we are ready to charge into this thing, right, fellas? Yep. Okay. All right, so... Uh, so uh, with I haste... You guys are going to get an extra attack, a plus one to attack, a plus four dodge to your AC, and an extra 30 and reflex save, and an extra 30 feet of movement for the next five, for, uh, for five rounds. Nice. Hey, who gets that? All of us. All of us. I cast haste. You can also roll to see if you can learn haste. How yes, much do we get to AC? Plus four. All right, mm. that just puts me up to 29, uh, Aiden, so no worries there for you. My current AC is 35. Wow, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Aiden, re remember what I told you what it was like when Sam was added to, to my normal group? Yeah. And all of a sudden, all my monsters were just worthless? Yeah. I think that means I just learned haste. <laughs> oh, you learned haste? Great. Yeah, haste is a five mana, so you needed a 20, so you rolled exactly what you needed. Oh, okay, perfect. I get one more attack, and it's at plus one as well. Yep. All right. So uh, with that being said, my goal is to uh, is to rush in and, and – make this hag like take her down like not take her down if i probably can't take her down one hit we'll see but to like really slow her down as much as i can so 
um, if she's down there, I'm going to use the bar bolt on every one. So it's not 1d6, it's 1d8 uh, on the damage. But then she can't cast spells. Um, and then I'm also... And because she's a fey creature, she takes extra damage from the metal, doesn't she? Over or is that time. Over, over yeah, time. Right, over right, right. time. Um, but how, how powerful is she, by the way? Uh, if uh, she's pretty powerful, um, do we need to roll initiative at this point? Yes, uh, you guys are gonna get a surprise round. Okay. And uh, uh, Delgon, this might be one of the toughest battles that we've ever faced. It is the toughest one we've faced so far. My initiative is a 20. Oh, you already put it in there. Look at that. Got you. I'm looking out. The question is, is it strong or overwhelming? You know, like how just how powerful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sam, do I get anything to my initiative because of haste? No, actually. I'm going to double check that in the book, but it's not on my card. It seems like it, it should, doesn't it? Well, if it doesn't affect Dex, like that's all, the only thing that affects initiative, really. So, oh, I mean, shit. Yeah. I'm ten. Uh, by the way, I think you looked at the wrong roll for me. I I got two, although I didn't count any. Um, uh, would you say uh, like surprise or whatever? That's oh, just surprise wouldn't add anything. What's that? You have uh, what's your Dex bonus? Uh. One. <laughs> What's funny is it actually affects spider climb, so I now climb at double speed as well. Oh, great. Um, <laughs> tooth, tooth roll to 13. Okay. Tooth, hey, by the way, Tooth is also affected by haste, Mike. Okay. All right, I'm going to take a whiz real quick. All right, guys. Here we are. The boss battle. I'm going to hold my action, and I assume Tooth will as well, because Ethan's got to run in there with the light first. Right. Well, he doesn't have to, because there is light. There's illumination right there. Oh, we see light coming from the area? Yeah, okay, can you see that? Uh, I can't see the full room. The the Maybe that's just because... Oh, I'm just going to move my guy and see what happens. Yeah, I can see the whole room if I move over here. It's just because of where I was standing. Oh, okay. In half. Okay, and that's actually what? really awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, it shows my line of sight. It's actually pretty cool. All right, so... All right, everyone's initiative should be in there. All right. Uh, so I wish my initiative was higher. I had a plan, and this is going to mess it up. <laughs> oh, no. Yep, Daz already ruined it. <laughs> I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to run back out again. Okay. I only used up half of my movement. <laughs> Sweet. I'm within 30 feet of the hag, so I'm going to cast Ray of Enfeeblement on the hag. Okay. And I'm going to uh, empower it. Um, so range touch attack right now is plus 13. Uh, I got a 25 on range touch. Yeah, you, you hit it, I think. Okay. <laughs> um. And she will take 2d6 plus 1 strength damage. So she gets a minus... Ooh, I rolled double sixes. She gets a negative 13 to strength. What's the, what's the uh, save? There is no save. Oh, okay. I, I ran. That's the range touch attack. That's why. Oh, that's right. There's no save. Yeah, yeah you're right. Um, yeah. She, her, her strength can't drop below one, but it can drop her to one, but she gets a negative 13. Um, I will then use my extra attack, I, which um, I'm going to just cast my free little uh, energy burst thing. Okay. At the hag as well. Hits a 26. Yep. 
for six damage. And then I'm gonna go five, 10, 15, 20. Uh, just gonna run back to there. Uh, let me do some math because I gotta recalculate her bonuses for a second. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, I, that's the first time I've gotten to use that, and it, it was like perfect. That's great. Okay, bonuses recalculated. We're good. Uh, the hag looks up from what she's doing. She makes this evil cow, uh, cackling. And, um, yeah, that, that's all she does. Tooth. Is a hag, by the way? Um, there was oh, can one. you not see in the room? So, but if you, Danny, if you take your figurine and just move to here, you'll suddenly see the whole room. Uh, just do it for a second, even though it's not your action, it'll yeah. like show you stuff. You can go ahead and do that just for a second. That's, yeah, I, that's see, how I, did to see the hag. I see a bunch of creatures, but they all look identical. No, there's the hag right here. Oh, right oh there. Got, got it. Got it. It's an awesome uh, art for the hag, too, that you picked, by the way. Thanks, man. I don't know who did that. It was <laughs> um, credit to guy whose art I stole. <laughs> Thanks, Google Images. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, what's Tooth doing? Tooth is waiting. He's he is not about to run in with a bunch of stinky undead without me and me in there. So he'll hold. Okay. By the way, that that will last five minutes. The rave of enfeeblement. Okay, so the whole fight. So the whole fight. Yeah. yeah. All right, Etan, go ahead. All right, I step forward one, and I say, damn, lady, you better stop spreading your ugly. And I just start firing arrows at her. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to fire the, the barbed arrows until I get at least two lodged in her. Okay. So um, my first one is, so she's Navirite, so I get plus two to attack. And uh, does that also give plus two to damage to favored it enemies? Does. It does. Yep, it does. Oh, it does. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah. The hag is, is glowing real, real Navirite. That is the Navirite, right? You're detecting that, Danny. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> She's glowing like her pool. All right. So that means I get... Uh, so uh, 15, plus 15 on the first one. So that's 22. Does okay. that hit? That is not a hit. All right. Then I'm going to do my rapid shot, which uh, is at uh, minus two on that one. So that's 16. Not a hit. Not a hit. So I'm also recording. So I only had 10 of these barbed arrows. Um, Sam, the extra attack, what is the bonus on it? Is it my highest it's attack? Your, yeah, full attack bonus. All right. So we get one more at 15. 17 doesn't hit and my last one is uh oh shit i haven't been adding in my bonus for navirites but uh, i don't think it'd help anyways uh, no. last one is eight wait how big is that bonus plus two. plus two so that first one would have been a 24 no that's not enough and the last one is 18 and that one doesn't hit either nope so are these like flying and missing her or are they hitting her and bouncing off into the pool they are hitting her and bouncing off into the pool Protection from arrows. All right. All right. I've done all I can do. Oh, that just messed up my plan. All right, Delgon. What's your plan? Well, the plan was I uh, cast an energy wall right there so all these zombies coming through get hit, but... uh. Um, but that was sort of assumed that he could cast arrows through it <laughs> or throw, shoot arrows through it. So, um, 
Hey, well, I didn't finish my move action. Could oh no, other things moved already. Okay, never mind. I mean, yeah, you, you got want, another fifty feet of movement. You're good if you want to move. Like nothing moved to. I mean, Delgon, would you tell me like when you see the? Oh, you wouldn't see the arrows bouncing off. Okay, never mind. Do do what you want. Oh, I guess if I'm going to role play this, I don't know that the arrows bounce, so I'm going to move here and cast my spell. <laughs> yeah. Go for it. Let's do it. See what see where this goes. So yeah, right here I'm going to cast the uh, uh an air-based uh energy wall. I okay. say air because I just have a feeling the others are going to obscure sight. Air. Now, maybe it's on the floor and it wouldn't, but since, I don't know, the description's not. So I'll go with air. Okay. Um, so, is it like here? Like that? That's right. Okay. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Move it down one more because I want to leave us a little room to move. So That's move it. smart. There you go. You're using the Luminar ability, Danny? Yeah. It's 15 by 15 by 2. Oh, so it's like that thick? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. And it, if anybody moves across it, they take 64 damage. Wait, but that raises the question, what if I cast it on top of those two guys? You should definitely do that. Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, and so... It lasts for 2d4 rounds. So, Danny, you need to roll how long it lasts as well. All right, I'll roll that one first, just to get it out of the way. Okay. Um, all right, so it's going to be eight rounds. Damn. All right. Uh, get a round counter. And then 6d4 damage. Um, and then, Danny, if you... If, good. <laughs> uh, well, these two things die. Danny, you can additionally either make an attack with your quarter staff on that zombie next to you, or you could throw the base range uh, range touch attack that we have. Because of haste, you get an extra attack. Uh, you know what? I'm having good luck with my staff. It, oh wait, I just moved you. Sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm gonna, uh, smack this guy in the neck. Neck chop with my staff. Which, um, I gotta remind myself every time. Seven. Don't forget, you currently get a plus one for haste, so you're actually at a plus eight right now. Oh. And you also have an additional <laughs> plus... Three from your strength modifier, so I think you should actually be at a plus ten. <laughs> Wait, I thought the strength modifier was for damage. It's to both attack and damage with a melee weapon. Oh, crap. When I said I had it in the wrong place, it didn't matter because I landed it anyway, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. so I'm going to be seven, ten, and what's the haste one again? The haste just gives you a plus one. So 11. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so does that hit? Uh, yeah, it actually does. <laughs> 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 wow. All right. So uh, haste doesn't give me any damage bonus, right? No. It's the AC. Okay. So... But I do have the strength thing, so 1d6 plus 6. Nice. Eight damage. Nice. Still up. Um, you all also hear a, a cry for help uh, on the hall north, north of you. This direction? Yeah, up there. <sighs> The old call for help trick. Bitches. Fucking hags. <laughs> Fucking hags. <laughs> uh, Daz, go ahead. Oh, all right. 
Um, have a heart, Daz. Call for help. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, describe the voice that called for help. It's a it's a raspy uh, male voice. And it's not going to tug at my heartstrings. <laughs> oh, oh, wait. Was was Delgon <laughs> the end of the turn? Yeah. All right. So Tooth uh, would rush up and attack this thing before it was it lost oh, its yeah. turn. Okay. Yep. Um, God, I keep forgetting. Oh, yeah, he's plus eight. Such a powerful he's also, little booger. Yeah. Uh, 18 and 15. Yep, those both hit. All right. So he does one and one damage to it. Nice. Oh, and he grapples him. Okay. Roll to grapple. Uh, five. Uh, well, let's hope he rolls low. He did. Boom. Yeah, grappled. He's on his face. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Little kitten, kitten, uh, like cat scratches on his face, too. Yeah, exactly where he likes to be on top of a zombie's head. <laughs> All right, sorry. Uh, Daz, it's your turn. What did you do? Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm, I get my turn now, right? Oh, yeah, it is your turn. I'm sorry. Will this thing get attack of opportunity while the cat's on it? Um, from the cat or from you? Twenty. From me? No. Cool. Um, remove uh, near the wall. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to break uh, Delgon's wind. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm going to uh, cast um, Energy Blast, um, and I am going to make it acid damage. Okay. It's 40 feet away. It does a cluster. It does 4d4 damage in a 15-foot radius. So if I, I hit her, it'll affect him, the guy next to him, this guy up here. And this guy down here. Okay. You sure you okay. want to hit the civilian? Um, yeah, that's some sanity damage right there. Oh, I didn't realize it was a civilian. I thought he was a... Yes, uh, everybody uh, behind him is is just a person, right? Not this yeah. guy. Well, that yeah, that's a zombie. Guy. But, like, uh, that's a dude. Oh. And then the two people behind the zombie are dudes. Okay. Just like civilians. Um, that will change my action. I'll, I'll. <laughs> All right, I'll cast it to here. Make it work. It's not letting me select a square. Oh, I got the wrong thing. Wait, sorry. Oh, the struggle, dude. There we go. All right. Okay. Here, so it'll affect her and this one zombie back here. Okay. But but not the civilian. Um, and it just does four d four damage. There's no roll of any kind. Okay. Um, so they'll both take seven damage. Okay. And then um, I'll use my free attack to do the range touch attack on the hag. That's just my little ball that I throw. Cool. Uh, and range touch attack of 15. That that hits, surprisingly. I was surprised. All right. Uh, <laughs> 2D. And that was on a 2. So, all right. Range touch attacks it is. Uh, awesome. Fuck. Plus two. She'll take another seven damage from that. 
Okay. And then uh, I am going to you five to fifteen. Yeah, I just move back to there. And that's my turn. Okay. Uh, this is a. Uh, we, we've used up one round of haste. This is round two of haste. Uh, means it is the hag's turn. We're, we're, I accidentally skipped uh, someone's turn, and then we went back, and then, yeah, so it's the hag's turn. So the hag's going to go over. And, yep. I'm going to need uh, you three to make some will saves. Cool. Uh, is she casting a spell that I can learn? Yes. Okay, ah, great. Me too. Um, will save. What is my will save? Oh, it's not as crazy. So uh, um, it's a fifth mana level spell. Okay, so that's DC 20. Wish that was an attack roll. Ah, fuck. Rolled an eight. I don't learn it. Danny, Danny learned it. Yeah, you learned uh, slow. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. That was, that was my... Okay, no, that was my uh, learn spell. No, maybe I shouldn't do that. <laughs> anyway, that, I meant to cast that for my will save. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, for the other one, it would be spellcraft. That's a six. So let, let me roll for that real quick. Well, uh, we can use that roll. My, well, it's a different modifier. Or he rolled it next. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just like subtract. That, that's for the. That's to learn the spell. That's still enough. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I, so right. I should have got. I should have saved, and I learned the spell. My yeah. saving throw. My will save is a twenty-four. Twenty-four. And you said it was slow. Yeah. What's the um? I'm not sorry. I'm not sure on the um DCs for these. Uh, a, for five mana, I believe it's fifteen. Okay, fifteen. Okay. Um. By the way, what does slow do? It's 16. I'm sorry, it's a bad time to ask. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I think you all passed. So, did the cat need to make it too? Oh yeah, the cat needed to make that too. All right. So toothless is no longer hasted, or tooth is no longer hasted. Yep. Slow negates haste. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Danny, in normal play, uh, you, you can only take partial actions and your AC goes down by two and your melee rolls, uh, go down by two. Okay. But you all passed except for tooth, but yeah. in our case, Danny, because we had haste on us, it would have just taken away our haste and we would have gone back to being normal. Right. Yep. Well, I was thinking about casting it right back at the hag, but you should do that. That sounds great. Yeah, but melee. I don't think the hag's going to be meleeing much. Not with a minus 13 to strength. It's true. <laughs> true. But it does bring its AC down. Mm. That's helpful. Mm -hmm. But it would be fun to get slow cast at us. We all save, and then I cast it right back. Learn <laughs> it, cast it right back. You should <laughs> totally do that. That sounds it awesome. It lands. Um, well, it's not my turn yet. I think you skipped Tooth's turn. Oh, you're right. I did. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Don't forget that Hooth, Tooth gets that extra attack too, Mike. No, because he lost his his haste just now. Oh, right, right. He's normal now. <laughs> Poor All right, Tooth. So he rolled a 14 and a 10. Uh, only the 14 hits. Okay. Did three points of damage. All right. Man, we need to get bull strength on your cat. <laughs> I like that. I like a really strong. <laughs> All right, this thing is going to try to hit the, the cat on its face. Yeah, it's it's seeing how that plays out. It actually makes me think that it'd be really fun to make a druid. Oh. Ooh. Like, now, it's, like, yeah. It'd be fun to have like a druid with an animal companion, and all the druid did was cast like cat's grace and bull strength on its animal companion to jack it up for combat. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be a fun character, I think. 
All right, nine damage on tooth. Ooh. That's the scariest attack that's been hit. It's just going to piss Tooth off. Oh, yeah. All right, Aton, go ahead. All cats should be like a Berserker class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the idea of a barbarian cat. <laughs> Oh, is it my turn? Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Um, I guess since I can't go through the wind wall, I'm going to run up this way and see what the shouts of help are. Um, okay. Oh, let me make sure I could have made that run. Oh, yeah. Right to there. So I run up, and what do I see? Uh, you see a guy. He's uh, tied to the ceiling. And he's being slowly lowered into the water. Um, what's slow, slowly lowering him? Uh, a crank up top. You got to assess how long he has. Like maybe it's real slow and you can just come back later. Nope. Uh, so <laughs> I, uh, he's getting out of there. I pull out my grappling hook. And uh, I'm going to try to hook him and pull him over to me. Okay. What What would I have to roll for that? Um, roll to hit. You won't roll damage, but you, you roll to hit him. Right. So are we saying like base attack plus dex would be range? Yeah, base attack plus dex. All right. So. And this guy is not going to try to dodge your grappling hook. And he's not a Navirite or a, uh, a undead, so I'm not going to get bonuses. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do get a second swing if I miss, though. Uh, 31. I'm pretty sure you got him. <laughs> All right. So I grapple his ass, um, and I pull him towards me. Does that work? Yep. All right. Uh, Come to daddy, baby. The the, the old man seems he very... Says, Don't make it creepy. <laughs> Um, he, he's very thankful, <laughs> All right. but also kind of weirded out. Uh, I look him dead in the eyes. I say, Aton De Belbane, monster hunter, commoner saver. saver. <laughs> <laughs> Is, does he roll for arousal? <laughs> uh, I don't even think he has to roll. No, nah, yeah, you got it. You crit it. You're got good. It. Uh, he yeah. says, uh, Nathaniel, commoner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now gone, it's your turn. Oh, um, I guess I haven't really been paying attention because I've been watching, uh, Eda Heine with his, uh, <laughs> 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 um <coughs> oh by the way no more zombies have tried to come forward through the nope <clears throat> okay um uh all right now remind me which ones these the two in the very at the very bottom of the map they're civilians yes uh, that guy is a zombie. Uh -huh. This one is the her the hag. No, that's a civilian. No. The, the hag. hag Where did the hag go? This is the hag. Oh, the hag's up here now. Got it. Yeah. Uh, Hold on. Uh, okay, so. You blast. I'll put some uh, some text so you know who's cool. No. Uh, I guess this is my highest damage thing. It just sucks because it's a radius and.
Yep. All right, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to do a energy blast. And... Oh, wait a minute. No. Fifteen foot would be three blocks. So, yeah, I'm just going to center it right on her. Okay. Uh, and it's... Uh, I'm going to do... Do, um... Do I know of any, uh... Elemental weaknesses or whatever that a uh, uh, um, that a hag might have. You, I don't know if you saw me use any acid acid earlier in the game, but uh, you know it has damage resistance ten for magic and cold iron. And what? Cold iron. Mm. Okay, so whatever I do, it's going to have a magic. So mm-hmm. earlier. When I hit it with the energy burst, did she take no damage? Uh, she took... She didn't take no damage, but she... Um, she she barely took any. Yeah, it's half damage. Okay. Oh, and 2d4. Well, whatever. It's it's range. I'm, I'm, just, I'm still going to go ahead and do it. Uh, yeah. So it'll be 4d4, and then uh, I guess you can chop that in half. Okay. I could just roll two d four, but it's more no, fun. Go ahead. Yeah. We gotta oh, get. Nice. We gotta get Eton in there to wail on her. Uh, and I used uh, I used acid in case anybody's wondering. Okay. Can you drop the um, air wall so that Eton can rush her? Yeah, I I would assume you could... Um, yeah, a ton is, like, really far now, but I'll go ahead and drop it. Well, we still got... So this is now we're in our th- second round of, of... Or, yeah, we've just finished two rounds of haste, so we have three more rounds, so he can run 60 feet. Okay, yeah, but wait a minute. I'm not... I'm sorry. I'm not going to drop it until... Just... Can I do that? Just be aware that as soon as I see him rushing, I'll, I'll drop it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because for now we can still do some... Like, she's about to come through it, potentially, so that could do some good damage. Yep. All right, uh, Daz, go ahead. I'm going to do the um, energy blast again here, so 44 damage. Okay. Seven. All right. Been some nice chip damage on this guy. Just chip chipping away. Uh, then I'll do my range touch on the zombie that affected Tooth. Okay. Since he's closer. Uh, 23. That hits. Nine damage. Alright, that zombie uh, is, is dead. Oh. Oh, my next one I got a good one. I didn't I didn't I didn't know about something on one of these. Sorry, thinking out loud. I'm gonna move here and climb to the ceiling. Okay. Um Hag's gonna throw throw some some projectiles at Delgon. Yeah, I think she should move toward me a little bit to do that. I think <laughs> uh, she thinks she's just fine. <laughs> uh, two projectiles running, slap you for eight damage. Is this, is this a spell I could potentially learn? It's Mage Bolt. You guys probably already know it. I, I do not. Oh well, you're about to know Mage Bolt. You know Mage Bolt. I, I don't, though, right? Uh, Actually, you might. It's not a very high cast. No. Yeah, you... It's base 15. Yeah, base 15. A, oh, base 15? Never mind, then. I'm... Okay. These guys will correct me. <laughs> Daz can teach me later. Yep. 
Oh, and I'm, I'm sorry, I took eight damage, you said? Yes. Flesh wound. <laughs> uh, it's Tooth, Tooth's turn. Tooth is going to hold his turn. Okay. All right, the zombie goes through here. Uh, roll the damage for him. Uh, yeah, that was... Is it 4... 6d4? Six, yeah, 6d4 air damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, this kills the zombie. Idiot. <clears throat> Uh, then drop, drop the wall so Eton can rush. No, it. not yet. Oh, okay. Delgon knows when to drop it. Mm. Eton has to make out with the civilian he. No. First. No. All okay. Right, my go. Yeah, it's your turn. All right. Did you skip tooth? No. Yeah. Yeah, because he didn't attack after the the hag went. I thought you said tooth. Yeah. Held. Yeah, you held tooth your... holes. Okay, that's why. I was, okay. I was making sure. All right, so uh, Delgon knows this from traveling with the Tawn. He likes to make a big entrance. Uh, <laughs> so he's not going to drop the wind wall to the last second. So that way my beard is just like whipping in the wind. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I run up to here. Tooth also knows what's going on. And Tooth is going to roll um, uh, heroic action. Uh, 14 to jump up on my shoulder. Uh, is that enough? To not get hit by the, or to jump on your shoulder, yes. Yes, all right. So I'm running full blast. Tooth jumps up, lands on my shoulder. I bust through the wind wall as it ends, beard and cloak flowing. And I do uh, two swings with my sword, uh, which are okay. my my normal ones. So, uh, she's Navirite, so I get a plus two, so it's plus 17. My d20, 32. That hits. And then the second one is 10 plus two, so it's 12 um, for 19. That one does not. All right. So then I roll uh, 1d8 plus, I'm 8, 9, 10. So I roll 18 points of damage on that one hit. Dang. And then I say... Don't, don't forget you get an extra I, attack. I, I, I know. I say, oh, okay. it looks like you need a bath. And I kick her in the head towards her pool. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a D20. Uh, I know I'm not going to do any damage, but <laughs> but I want to I wanna fuck with her. Uh so it's plus 17 to kick her in the head and make her take a bath. That's 25. Is it actually enough to, kick, to push her in the bath? Yes. <laughs> and then for Tooth's action, he's just going to hiss and purr at the same time. <laughs> I'm done. Next. Right. Delgon. <laughs> Oh, crap. He made me unprepared again. <laughs> uh, no, I'm going to... Um, I am going to do an energy burst. A small orb of energy. Uh, it's a ranged touch attack. So I roll... That means I roll ranged, right? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and it does 1d4 plus 1... But it gains in power and adds 1d4 plus 1 for each two caster levels. So I guess that means uh, 4d4 plus 4, right? Yep. Wait, does that mean... So level 6 is when I go up. Yeah, yeah, level 6 is when I get another one. All right. So, okay, so I need to roll range. Do, do I get a bonus? Uh, strength doesn't give a bonus there, no, right? So Dex that's will. just my natural. Dex will give you a bonus. Do I have Do I have Dex from the uh, the buffs? No, I not from both strength. From haste. From haste. No, haste didn't up our Dex at all. Otherwise, oh. our initiative would have been 
change. You're right. Yep. Right. Okay. Okay. So I get a plus five on ranged. Yep. Um, you do still get the plus one to attack from haste to all attacks. Oh, that that includes ra- okay. So plus uh, what did I say? It's plus six. Not very good. Um. So with her touch attack and her being um, knocked over, you definitely hit her. Oh, I do hit her. Okay. Yeah. Um, She's kind of stuck so, in her pool right now. So what did I say? Uh, 4d4 plus 4. Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, Daz. All right. I'm going to do something I thought I would never do. I'm going to cast Mage Bolt. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Mike and I always talked about how Mage Bolt was worthless, so that's why it's amusing to me. Um, just because at, at my current level, I actually do more with Mage Bolt because I get 3d4. Uh, it auto hits. So three, four plus three on the hag for nine damage. All right. I will then use my extra attack to hit her again, which it's a 32. You hit her. Uh, Four, two, D four plus two. For four damage. Okay. Uh, she stands up. Um, you can see her uh, ugly skin starting to wither away from being inside the pool. And she uh, she she quickly hops out. She shouts, "You'll never stop! Uh, shit! You'll never stop Yanira from summer- summoning her cult of hags." Wait, I'm sorry. What was it? What did she say? You'll never stop you, Nira. <laughs> from summoning her cult of hags. She okay, we just summon- wanted to make sure we got that. Uh, she she actually said that again in a normal voice. And she's like, you got it? You're good? Cool. And then she resumes. Uh, <laughs> uh, and she charges a ton. But she's covered in this goop. Yanora, you gotta stop your roll your roller. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> that was awful. It was awful, I'm sorry. Uh nineteen does not hit. Nope. Alright. Tooth. You know what Tooth's gonna do? Uh Grapple face. Yep. Uh first uh pounce. How but it doesn't need to pounce because he's right there. Alright. Just attacks on the face. Okay. Uh, so D20 plus 8. 18. And uh. 28. Oh, natural 20. Oh. All right. Let me pull up this critical hit thing. Crit him. Um... Need more straps. Standard damage an opponent's armor becomes damaged. Armor loses one AC bonus until mended. Nice. <laughs> and rolls a D3. Two points of damage. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, this guy back here. He's uh he's starting to push this guy into the pool. The guy who's cool. All right, and uh, Itan, go ahead. Oh, I forgot there was a zombie back there still. I'd move the map. I don't think. Yeah, I forgot I he was there too. Am I here? All right. I'm just gonna attack her with my haste, and then, uh. 
And screw that guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll take care of the dude. You got it. Oh, wait. Ye of little faith. <laughs> All right. Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to do my slew of hits on her. So that's a D20. I'm sorry. I forget it every time. Uh, plus 17. Roll. 18. Oh, it's a one. <laughs> that's a one. <laughs> Oh Damn. man, me of little faith right here. So I rolled a six. Uh, exhausted. You are fatigued. Oh no, man, that's gonna ruin all the cool stuff I was gonna do. Um, don't worry, I got some cool stuff. Fatigue. Yeah, a fatigued yeah. character can neither run nor charge, and takes a negative penalty to strength and dex. Doing anything that normally cause fatigue cause the fatigue character to become exhausted. Um, so, all right, negative two to strength and negative two to dex. Yep. That's pretty bad. I mean, not really with all these things that uh, Daz has cast on me. <laughs> You're, You're almost real. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that means I lose one there, nine, and seven. All right, so, uh, but I can still attack. I'm just fatigued now, so I'm just not attacking as well as I could. Yeah, uh, sadly, now you only get plus 16. Yeah. So I just rolled a 30 because, you know, I'm fatigued. <laughs> and a 28 because I'm still fatigued. Do either of those hit? Um, both hit. All right. Well, so it's only plus seven now because I'm fatigued. So 13 <laughs> and 15. Plus two because she's a Nibirite. Or plus four total. Oh, yeah. So yeah. 15 and 17. Wow. Wow. Yeah, this uh, this hag's looking tired and bloody. And then um, those are just my attacks. Uh, I'm fatigued, but I'm still running fast. Like so, uh, I can't run, but still at normal speed, I can make it to him. I'm going to. I know that this is going to get an attack of opportunity. She can just do it, but I'm going to run over here, jump, and heroic action. Try to grab him and pull him away from the pool. Like just. Like, leaping over this way. What are you That's saying? A... Huh? What are you going to say? It's a heroic action, man. <laughs> oh, by say, the way, the hat got you. As I'm jumping through the air to grab him, I'm just like, don't worry, man. You're cool. <laughs> <laughs> All um, right. So I'm going to use my dex, which is a plus four. Okay. Um, do you want me to roll versus environment or versus like the zombie? You got to roll versus the zombie's grip on him. All right. So I rolled a six. You're in the pool now. <laughs> oh no. And she uh, also, you yeah, hit with she, the hag too, right? Yeah. The hag got you too. So, um, she did, uh, damage, but also you're going to need to make a uh, fortitude save. Alright. I actually say not cool. <laughs> 19 fortitude save. That's actually a fail. Ooh. Shite. You're going to take uh, one con damage, so that's not bad. Um, and from being in the pool, you automatically lo lose all of your, uh, damage resistance and, um, elemental resistance is gone. All right. 
Oh, yeah. Hold on, wait. I took her full damage. So her damage that she did to me, which was what? Eight? Yeah. I have damage reduction four, so I actually only took... Yeah, you took four. All right. But from, from now on, you're going to take the full. Right. All right. Delgon, go ahead. All right. I am going to run down, and I'm going to say... Hey, hag bitch, join the club, and I'm going to hit her with my staff. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So that was the, yeah, plus 10. All right. Oh, wait a minute, plus 11. Oh. Because the... The other, so. Teen, uh, that actually misses, unfortunately. You get another attack from haste. Yeah, you get you get another attack. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, good because that one looks stupid. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really hope I was really hoping you'd get that attack. <laughs> that was a cool line. <laughs> All right, Daz, go ahead. Oh wait, now now did it miss her or did it hit her and it just didn't affect her? Uh, because really, he could have yeah. actually clubbed her head and she just like did that whole thing where it hits her and then she just looks looks right back at him. Um, yeah, actually, both of them would definitely hit her, just not affect her. So he did club her. Yeah, so she did join the club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Daz, what are you doing? I'm going to do a mage bolt on the zombie so I don't risk hitting anybody else. Okay. 13 damage to the zombie. That zombie is uh, no longer alive, dead, undead, or no longer undead. All right, I take one mental fatigue from doing that. I'm out of me. From thinking about undead or living using what 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 description you were gonna use is that what the mental damage is from um it's that i'm out of mana and i can still cast spells against my own oh, okay uh, so I'm, did you roll the save to see that you uh didn't ravage i don't have to roll a save i'm doing the focusing thing yeah no you still have to roll because if you roll a one on a d20 then you if you roll an automatic one you, then you accidentally ravage Oh, I didn't know you could accidentally ravage. Yeah, it's it's very low chance, but when you focus... Is that something... Oh, I see. Accidental ravaging. I never read that section. All right. Uh, all right. So I'm making a spellcraft check. I just didn't roll because it said I could make the check to take half damage rounded up. I got a 24. Okay. Uh, all right, the hag's gonna gonna take it. I'm, oh, I'm gonna, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm gonna shoot the hag with my other uh, range free range touch attack. Okay. Seventeen touch. That hits that hit earlier, right? Yeah. Yeah. For two D four plus two, eight damage. All right, now the hag's gonna take a chunk out of Delgon. Or attempt to. Uh, she she goes to bite Delgon. That uh, that his AC didn't go up because of haste, right? Nope. Okay. Then it, that... it, it, it should be plus four. Oh, oh it... AC is plus four. Yes. That, yeah. that misses Delgon. Yay! <laughs> and she makes a she makes a step over here so she doesn't get pushed into the fountain. And Aiden, when she's getting a plus nine, that's that's including the negative to her strength? Yes, normally it would be a plus 13. Oh, nice. All right. All right. Um, as, I, as I get over here, I'm just checking out these two dudes down here that are cool. Do they look hurt <laughs> in any way? Uh, no, but they look pretty scared and they're okay. uh, they're bound. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> Daz is like, 
it's all cool, guys. And then a spider <laughs> crawls out of his cloak across his face. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, and I'm, I'm currently on the ceiling, so... Yeah, yeah they're like, holy shit. <laughs> uh, so it's Tooth's turn. I think their name should change to not cool. <laughs> all right, so Tooth is going to pounce uh, on the on the creature. Okay. Um... <laughs> Let me double check. I think Pounce is just one attack, or <laughs> can jump and attack with both of its claws. Nope, it's both of them. All right. So eight and eight, 25 and 14, either of those hit? Uh, the 25 does. All right, that does three damage. And then it's going... If the cat's the one that kills this thing. <laughs> uh, Tooth is going to then, uh, because it can do an attack after the pounce, it's going to bite. Uh, it rolled a 20. Not enough? Uh, nope, not enough. All right. Okay, uh... It's on. All right, so I'm going to get out of the pool. In no, this pull her in Jason Voorhees style. <laughs> so one, <laughs> two, three, four, five. And then That's a column. There's a column there. You can't go in that space. Oh, shit. <laughs> five. There you go. But she's still flanked, right? She's flanked now. All right, and we we still have haste. This is this the last round? Uh, no, there's one more round. Oh, even sweeter. All right, so let's roll some of these sweet sweet rolls. D twenty plus sixteen, twenty five. My haste attack. Thirty. And then uh, my one final hit, thirteen. That probably didn't hit. All right, the twenty five and the thirty hit. All right. So, uh, D8 plus 9, roll. So, 11 and 16. The hag, uh, in one final blow, you, you quell the hag's back, and you hear a, a satisfying snap as she screams out into the night and then falls uh, to the ground. You've slain the hag. Yay! All maybe right. you guys, if we take back her pieces, maybe you guys can learn some stuff from that. <laughs> I'll uh, search uh, using detect magic uh, and just searching around in general, searching the hag's corpse. Okay. Um, on the corpse, you uh, you found you can find her uh, heart stone. Uh, it seems to have lost most of its magic, but it's still probably going to be worth a pretty penny, especially to uh, tower mages to uh, study it. Okay. Uh, other than that, uh, there's basically just rags on her. Okay. I'll take her heart stone. Cool. Uh, I assume you freed the civilians <laughs> that were cool. Yeah. All right. I mean, eventually. Eventually, yeah. After you get done looting. <laughs> and then, should we search the rest of the place? Yeah, we gotta find the, the, the chest. The boss chest. Uh, yeah, you can do some um, perceptioning. Uh, and then also search down where those, like, that hallway where the dead bodies were. We need to go back and check that as, as well. Oh yeah, this guy's in the light now. All right, let's gather him up. Let's take him back to civilization. Awareness of eight. You guys, he said roll perception, right? Yeah. Yeah, and that mine was a natural twenty. So. Oh dang. Yeah. Uh, you you can tell there's a chest in that little. 
in that pool. Uh, Etan, you're already slimy. Will you grab that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I pull out the hag's chest. Okay. Um, and then I go into the pool and find the wooden box down there. <laughs> <laughs> There's um in the chest there's there's not a whole lot. There's uh, a about a thousand gold pieces, a scroll, and a potion. I have no need of those things. Uh, Freeing I'd these like cool people is enough for me. <laughs> yeah, I wanna read the scroll over his shoulder. Oh, I did. Comprehend languages as well. Danny, what did you say? You said you'd roll the scroll. Is that what you said? Yeah. Read the scroll. Okay. Yeah. So you're both going to read the scroll. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and roll a spellcraft check. What? What is it? Spellcraft. Spellcraft. All right. Eighteen. Yeah. This is a this is a scroll of um, making sure this this spells in here. Is Burning Hands in this system, Mike? It has a different fire. name. Yeah, what's it called in this? Mage Fire. Mage Fire. Yeah, it's a scroll of Mage Fire. Okay. We'll have to take time. Wait, to is that study. the one you learned earlier from watching? That's Mage and Bolt. I missed it. Oh, Mage, Mage Bolt. Yeah. Bolt. Yeah. The rules on learning from a – this is like a small spell book basically. It'll actually take us like a day or two to learn it off of this writ writing. Okay, well, we got time, so. Yeah. And then the, I'll detect magic on the potion. Okay. It's a potion of um, bull strength. <laughs> Give that a two a time. <laughs> Yeah, I'll definitely give that. For that. <laughs> I'll give it to Tan. I'll tell you, it's a potion that'll boost your strength for a short period of time. You know, when you really need it. Awesome. So save your good one-liners for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's also a scroll of one-liners. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Interesting. How'd she get that scroll out of my journal? <laughs> Cool. And then we uh, searching the rest of the area, that area by the corpses or that smelled like corpses. Was that just piles of dead bodies? Yeah, there's just piles of dead bodies in there. I'll even I'll move you over there. All right. So you can see it. So you can see the dead bodies. Oh, that's not the right guy. There we go. Well, that's three dead bodies, but. So that's what's there in that room. Cool. All yep. right. Well, if we feel that we've killed the demon and saved the people. So you're going to, are you going to leave the dungeon? Yeah. Yeah. All right. You, you leave the dungeon with the civilians until um, the man who was uh, being, <laughs> being uh, who is tied up above the well uh introduces himself uh i'm uh, sheriff gordon i uh ran law enforcement in this uh in the Fayward bog um we will have a statue erected in your honor for saving our town i'm not sure if we saved it well for saving uh four people in the town we can also, like, lead you to another town with maybe more people if you want. Um, or you can stay here. Well, now that there's a lot more real estate, um, I think it's going to be a good good time. Hmm. Buyer's market's what you're saying. Yeah. I get it. The town's going to uh, grow really well. <laughs> What's up, Danny? Can can I can I can I get in on this real estate? Yeah, dude. <laughs> what um, I'll, I'll sell you a lot for a thousand gold. 
just kind of came into some money. Oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think with Wait, that... How were... long does one have to pose for a statue to be built? Quite a long time. But if you got a few hours, Ace. <laughs> All right. So we're going to cut okay. off the streaming. 